we on? Okay, good evening and welcome to the Georgetown School Committee meeting of Thursday, February 12th, 2015. If we could please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we will begin the meeting with the approval of um, minutes. We have regular session minutes of January 22nd, 2015, budget and finance minutes of February 3rd, 2015, governance minutes of January 22nd, 2015, as well as acceptance of warrants 31V15, 33V15, and 32P15. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Hey, we don't have our student um, rep this evening. It might be because of the weather. I appreciate everybody that came out. I think this, this, this little storm wasn't expected. Um, is there anyone here from the public that would like to talk about anything on the agenda? Thank you. Okay, we're going to move um, right along into the recognition of one of our 10th um, graders at the, um, middle high, at the high school, Christopher Pitcher. And his family. Come on up, Chris. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Messina, if you could and come yeah, on come up. Yeah, come on up, too. Anthony. Sure, right there. That's perfect. Does your dad want to come up too? Yeah. The picture's welcome. You want to come on up? Okay. <laughs> okay. The more um, the merrier. I was perusing through the paper last week, and I came across that wonderful article about you, and mm -hmm. it, it didn't it surprise was. me. So I immediately notified the superintendent, and she was thrilled too. Yeah. She I read it surprised. too. I'm like, we got to do something she about this. She wasn't surprised. So I was so happy that you decided to come, and I'm glad that Mr. Messina came yeah, too. Absolutely. So why don't you just tell us about this recognition, the Trudy Larson Award? Um, well, basically, what the Trudy Larson Fund is is it's a um, scholarship for young musicians that are part of the Northeastern Massachusetts Youth Orchestra that I'm part of. And um, it gives them money to be able to upgrade their instrument to something a little better than what they're playing on, or um, have an instrument of their own if they're playing on one owned by the school system that they're part of. So um, I wrote an essay describing um, what music has meant to me, what I've done through the Nimio Foundation, and um, like the financial need for it. And um, I had ended up winning the scholarship, which was mm -hmm. really awesome. That's great. And Sorry. it was $1,000? Yes, it was Towards your instrument. So how much does your instrument cost? Um, the one that I got was um, normally $2,900. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And, um, very expensive. Yeah. You're a trumpeter, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, I had bought a Bach Stradivarius, um, which is a top-of-the-line professional instrument. Mm -hmm. and. Um, they can be pretty costly, and thankfully that grant allowed me to um, shave off some of the money from that and be able to actually make the purchase. Wow, that's, that's, that's awesome. Great. That's great. That's just yeah. great. Wow. I mean, great. I, I go to all the concerts, and I go to the Memorial Day parades, yeah. and, you know, you can't go to anything without seeing Chris Featured. You know, he is one of, I would say, I put in your notes, I think he's one of our talented, most talented musicians that I've been aware of in my eight years here. He's and, definitely uh, a, a positive addition to the yeah. to the band program and really to the music program and school community as, mm -hmm. as a whole. You know, like you I would. think about graduation with the trumpet voluntary at the beginning, <laughs> and there's Chris at the yeah, you know, at the and he front does playing, the solos. So. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, always so. willing to sort of do that extra, and that's not easy to put yourself out there all the time. But yeah. I know how much the town really appreciates hearing you play taps yeah. at, oh, it's at, a uh, at all of the yeah. uh, at all of the the, the ceremonies. Yeah, so. no, you're very impressive. Thank you. you are. I, and the taps, especially like when I you know. go behind the yes. um, fire oh, yeah. like all yes. of a sudden you hear it and you're like, where is it? It's, it's just yeah. beautiful. It is. I mean, we have a wonderful music program. It's something we're one of our most prized, you know, programs. Um, but, you know, we do as often as we can like to recognize students who we think, you know, have just something a little special. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when, when uh, Barbie asked, you know, what do you think about having him come and inviting Anthony and his family, um, you know, we just wanted to do it as a way to show you how proud we are of your work and, and your efforts and what you bring to the music program and, and how you support the community as well. 
and we're grateful. We're grateful. We're very grateful. Absolutely. So we have just a little, we're just going to give you a little certificate, oh, and then you can great. put it in your room. And it just, you know, it says in recognition of being awarded this, you know, this, um, you know, Trudy Larson Instrument Fellowship, just as a little token of, you know, our recognition of your efforts. Thank okay, you very much. so I'll give you that. So, Mr. Messina, how many trumpeter, trumpeters are there? In the high school, we have eight trumpeters right now. Okay. And Chris sits first chair. We do auditions at the start in the fall. And uh, and based on those, he took first chair um, two years in a row, I believe, as a freshman came in. And it's just always been, uh, you know, a positive influence in, in the group and in the section. And um, sometimes we break into sectionals, which is like, so just the trumpets are working together and just the clarinets are working together. And section leaders lead that. So he's led them during those, you know, a lot of pride opportunities for leadership within the ensemble. So um, they, you know, he's really stepped up and uh, is also our drum major, one of our drum majors for the marching band. He's going to be leading us down Main Street in Disney. <laughs> and oh, so we're oh, very watching. excited Great. that. Yeah, <laughs> so um, just a lot of a lot of good things going on in the program right now. And, um, you know, like you said, you know, instruments are, are pretty costly. Yes, yeah, um, I, I and couldn't believe that. Yeah, you know, even intermediate instruments run probably around fifteen hundred dollars for just the beginning band instruments, trumpet, flute, clarinet, things like that. So instruments like tubas and berry, you know, berry sax, I just priced out as uh, for an intermediate model is fifty five hundred dollars. Wow. So um, you know, that's usually where the district steps in and helps out with those things. But uh, yeah, I mean, we're very proud of Chris and we're very proud of the work that he's done and and will continue to do as going forth. So yeah. Yeah. Very impressive child. So, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you for right. coming, Chris, and thank you for your family coming out too. Thanks, Anthony. For thank being you very much. Have a great evening. evening. All right. Bye. Thanks so much. Off Thanks to for a music coming. Parents meeting. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. So, also, you know, in a in a, a positive student um, celebration, um, you may have known that the. Um, PTA had sort of organized a, what one of the give backs they call them um, to the Monarchs game in Manchester, Manchester Monarchs game. And Tyler, actually, why don't you come up because you oh. could you could give us some information on this. Um, and Tyler did an amazing amount of work to to get it to happen. You I know, couldn't have done it without the PTA president. The P Jill yeah, yeah, she too. Jill did great. Yes. But they had 50, 50 kids, right? Fifty kids between preschool. Thank All the way up through fifth grade. I know, and they. Oh so we, yes, a couple of days ago, we were um, emailed. A few of us were emailed. I think I might have mentioned something to Jill that she said, "Oh, let me send it to you," and I was so like proud and touched when I saw it to imagine, you know, fifty kids, <laughs> you know, singing in front of this professional hockey yeah. audience, and um, I thought it would be really great to just share it with you and yeah, the and the awesome. public and yeah, was, you know. It was a really neat experience yeah. for the kids to be able to be a part of that and be able to I definitely back. want to recognize Tyler's efforts because Jill Thank made a point to say he, he did a ton of work on it. So she did, that a, lot is, the, she did a lot of the phone calls. And she, things. Yeah, she's great. She's so it, made it, it made it a lot easier just for me to focus on the kid, kids, getting the kids around yeah. and practicing and things like yeah, that. Yeah, it's very short, but, you know, I, I just think it's, yeah. it's um, yeah. God bless America, yeah. right? So it's it's kind of fitting, you know, with Pledge of Allegiance and all that stuff. <laughs> He, our intention initially was to do it right after that, but this will be fine. So Julie very nicely downloaded it, and I guess Peter's providing the adapter oh, cord. So it's a it's a, it's a team effort team here. Effort here. Oh. <laughs> and Chris is going to come out and help us with whatever technical information we need. Okay, so they had an honor guard. Attention to the 101 platform where the Georgetown chorus will be singing God Bless America. <laughs> oh, thank you.
Isn't that great? I am like very good. Yeah, I just think that was just, that it really made my day. <laughs> I know. Well, that we always nice. want to try to, oh, we're going to talk about adorable. budgets and, you know, it's nice to bring, you know, some remembrance that the reason we're doing all of what we're doing is because of that, because yeah. of the kids. So, you know, I, kids. I thought it was a nice thing yeah. to, thank you, Julie, for nice. doing that. And Tyler, again, for all of your, yeah, thank you. your efforts in that way. It must have been a fun day for the kids. For preparing. Yeah, I, I had to be home that weekend, thank but you. I would have definitely signed up because, well, of course, I love hockey. My boys played all their <laughs> life, but. Um, but I was sad to miss it, but I was thrilled to get the video, to get the, the tape. That just was awesome. Oh, that's good. Great. Okay. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, we have um, senior celebration. Come on up. Come on up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, you do. We'll try to make just it a, like, maybe think, like, my twins were, like, that age. At some point, they were. Oh, oh my goodness. No, they're not anymore. <laughs> As yours. As mine, I know. And so I'm especially appreciative it, of everything. It is an interesting year, senior year. It is. <laughs> and it's scary. Yes. Very and much. Can you introduce yourself? I am Kim Weikert Moner. My kids are Jensina and John Moner. And uh, they've been in Georgetown forever. <laughs> <laughs> And we I'm, know the Lundquist and very well. Yes. 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 I'm Denise, Denise Demento, Robert Demento's mom. Yeah. He's okay. a graduating mm -hmm. senior. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I told him I was going to help with the senior celebration and he said as long as I don't go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's well they don't know that I think that I'm going that they don't know. So. Sometimes it's best just not to, you know. Well, you know, the <laughs> thing is is one of us has to stay home because we have the dogs. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> but dogs it is a lot of work, so we appreciate all the time that you put in to make their senior year so special. Well, the thing is I think Ethel Di Pasquale has yeah. done the most. The majority. And, yeah. yeah. She does yeah, a lot. she has. She always did with football and anything that's going yeah, on. She's she, wonderful. Very much. I, I would love twenty percent of her energy. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> but my kids are in hockey, so they, you know, they go to the, you know, the co-op. So exactly. You know, I don't know the all the football, wrestling, you know, right. and everything that is the fundraising. So. Yeah. yeah. I'm kind of like in the dark. <laughs> so what are you planning? <laughs> well, okay. What do we have here? It's kind of mirrored off of last year. It was yeah. difficult to get a committee together, so they Nobody were mirroring to off of <laughs> yeah, last year the whitewater rafting trip, and they were yeah. going to. They wanted to get approved so we could start raising money for it. Mm -hmm. And again, same as last year, they wanted uh, have permission to sell plants at Easter time, a bake sale, sell lollipops, lollipops. at sporting yep. events, a raffle and to send letters out to the local businesses to see if people will be willing to help mm -hmm. to bring the cost down for everybody. From what I'm told, the buses are quite expensive and they're having a difficult time with that where it is late getting a start. Yeah, we didn't get the coach buses, right? Right, right. No. So we're working on that. So there's a lot of... Um, the hypnotist? Of, yeah. The Is that all you do, the hypnotist? Yeah. yeah. I you mean, know. then we have to have a police person there yeah, we have to have a, and they well, donate is their the time we, aren't we behind on it isn't wouldn't that have already have happened no i don't no, know usually like it's in march, march. that's it, right oh, okay. yeah. usually march yeah mm -hmm. um i don't know she's got raffle for 18 holes of golf i don't know what that somebody must have donated means mm -hmm. car wash thing and that'll be part of the raffle i think another thing is we could probably get additional raffle items if they're going to do a raffle, maybe they could do that with. Yeah, the they just have to make sure they go through the town. I'm sure Ethel right. will know that because right. she's done it before. Right. right. Yeah, with Derek. Well, maybe yeah. asking for coins too, because I remember when the kids were little, you know, the PTA always had the classroom coin collection, but now that but we're they, not doing but, that anymore, I've got this huge collection. <laughs> that would be a hit. That would be. A, but the thing is, is like they. Love to give them. But the kids can't do anything. During school is the, that's is why that, you that's why you would well, come here right is if you were going to solicit the staff and the students during the school yeah, day. Yeah, and I think that everybody's saying that they're not, not they don't that, want to do that. That's right. Okay. Yeah, so you're going to raise funds, but it's going right. to be the way through others business, through business. Yeah. 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 Yes, mm -hmm. through yeah. businesses and selling things at like basketball games and mm -hmm. whatnot. Well, but th and that's a hard thing because mm -hmm. it ends tomorrow. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <a lot. laughs> 
Well, so my hockey husband. stuff is not, but I have to get to that too. Hello, yeah. <laughs> we had the bake sale at Georgetown, and you well, know the, the bake, bake sales do great. Mm -hmm. Bake sales right. bring they a do. lot of money. Mm -hmm. yeah. Plus, there's the prom and the frolics, the frolic and the dances coming up. Mm -hmm. They think they might be able to uh, sell get something. Some lollipops and different things. We already have sixty dollars from the lollipops in our fund. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy Wood, she's like she's. It is amazing how queen. it comes together, though. Yeah. yeah. It is it amazing will. how it comes together. It will come together. Well, and we're tr just kind of trying to, like, put out to the parents that it's probably going to be $200 mm -hmm. if we don't right. get funds. Do That's you know right. what I mean? That's right. right. And you can do and that. And if they want to go, they go. Right. It's not a school sponsor trip. It's something right. that the parents do in addition, uh, sort of yes. as a special for people who want to go. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure Ethel knows all about this because again we've we've this conversation we've had in the past, but it has to do with so you, you so it's not a school sponsored trip, right? But so you want to make sure that your your that your organization your group yes. has is protected if something right. were to happen. So right. I believe that we had our attorney draft for you in the past a a, a release. Mm. So you oh, ask people to that. sign a release. Okay, that basically kind of indemnifies you right. so that you, you yeah. know somebody gets hurt yeah. they don't come back and say well you know you're responsible right. right just like the rafting company they have a release they sign we mm. can have them with that when they sign that have them sign that as well at the same time before right. they get on the bus that's right well that's right. and uh, also the I think the laundry bags that they bring in their own stuff and then we go through that and mm -hmm. make, mm -hmm. they said yeah yeah, yeah. You have people you, who've done you it. You try, too, right? you know. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, because it's supposed to be not a alcoholic, non drug. That's right. Drug. That's, that's right. How that's has right. it worked out in the past? It's, it's been a very. We haven't had issues. Seems in the past. like I know uh, Missy Bjork. She posted a lot of pictures. It seemed like they had the time of their they lives. They do. Yeah. They do. It's a very popular. They have fun. Yeah, and I think the I think last year the weather was horrible, but they right. still but they right. still had a blast. Yeah. I love yeah. going. I wish that Robert wouldn't mind if I went. I love I go whitewater rafting all the time. It's Maybe he'll very change my mind. No, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure he won't. <laughs> but that's okay. It's just fun knowing they're having yeah. fun. Well, I think it's great. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think, think it's, it's an awesome idea. You, so how many people do you have in your committee between you two six. and then six. Okay. six or eight? Six eight. or eight. Well, that's good. Yeah. 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 I mean, we'll I think we've got fine. a good group that, you know, going to be responsible for doing things that we need to do. Right. And Ethel, she's them. <laughs> Oh, she, yeah, she's and other great. other people now, <laughs> uh, now now that there's a basic committee formed, other people are saying, are kinda, "Oh, if you need yeah, help, yeah, coming on board, it, but they yeah. don't mind right, helping." Right. Then yeah. Reach out yeah. for help when right. Need, when yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, I think the whole thing was like, I mean, nobody stood up, and mm -hmm. I like I was the one who was like, my husband says, "What the hell are you doing?" Pardon my language, <laughs> and but then the, then everybody just you know, right? Yeah. Came well, on no board. one wants to be that that you know the the leader of it. Right. Yeah. There's plenty of people that I'm sure will help, right, Pam? Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you yes, sign I'd Pam? Be happy to do. <laughs> Pam, come on! Yes, you know I'm, my number. I've never told you I will do whatever I can do, and I'm sure every, you know once everybody goes and has a fabulous time, your husband will be thanking you up and down. No, and he's <laughs> not going to go. <laughs> no, he's not going to go. Denise and I are going to go. No, if Robert has anything, going to be appreciative that you've worked so hard to make it all happen. Right. Well, you know, because I have the twins, it's kind of like I felt they're like that, that I wanted to be a part of their senior year. Because they're going to be, my God, they're going to go on. I'm going to be an empty nest. <laughs> I know, it's going to be very yeah. odd. Yeah. Yeah, but he, you've got the, the... I'm still going to be going from, you know, <laughs> three to two, and it's going to be different. You know, the dynamics change. There's yeah. no doubt about yeah. that. But we don't three. have to do any approval. No, because I don't, it isn't. We don't. That's it, good because so, well, so we, we sort of have gone back and forth with this over the years. Um, the we the committee used to approve the trip, mm -hmm. and I mean, if it's an overnight or an out of state, right? They would if it was a school sponsored trip, they would approve it. Right. If you were going <laughs> to solicit staff and students during the school day, you know, there's a policy about that. They would approve it. Yeah. Okay. But since you're really not doing either of those. It's really just nice to have you come and give information to the committee, but they don't need to take a formal vote on it. Oh, okay. Um, well, you, it, you is can an do it is an overnight. It is an overnight, but, but, but it's not school sponsored. Gotcha. Right. So okay. that's the difference. Where right. are you going? What, New Hampshire? Maine. 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 Okay. Maine. Bangor, Maine. Bangor. Oh, Bangor. Bangor. Oh, wow. 
Yeah. Is that where three and a half hour are? trip? Yeah, that's yeah, that's far. This is it, substantial. Well, and of time. Uh, <laughs> we didn't get the coach buses, so it's going to have some high waters this year. That's for sure. Yeah, with the snow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> usually, the, usually I bet they're like class two. I bet you this is going to be three, four with all the water. I'm not going on it's that one. I'll, I'll go, but I'm not going. Oh, they'll have a blast. <laughs> I, I find well, yeah. it safer when the water's higher because. Well, you, you've done it before. Well, yeah, yeah, because it's not as rocky. What's dangerous is when they hit the rocks. It's it's going to be a blast. I did in Colorado. <laughs> I, I have oh, Whitewater River rafted. Yeah, it's. I'm not sure if I'll do it again mm. so, but it was on your it was on your bucket list and it's done right yeah. well i mean yeah, yeah it's, it's <laughs> we'll see we'll see okay but so do you need anything else from us like like the fundraising things no, i think you ran through the ones that you're gonna do i mean you obviously if they're gonna affect the school you know that you want to run it by the principal prior right. to make sure that you know, there's not an interference with other things that are going on. That, right. You know, other fundraisers maybe that classes are counting on doing Certainly, a certain like week. You don't want to be competing. Or, yeah. Right. Yeah. Like if you're doing a bake sale and, you know, right. another group is doing a bake sale, you might not want to. Yeah. Right. So they don't need any special permits or written permission to send the letters out to the local businesses? And we, we, nope. It, no. If okay. you wanted to send something out to... Uh, families, parents, then you you would send it to my office because right. I approve everything that goes out. Right. But you know, you're you're sort of your own entity. So you okay. whatever you feel you need to do, okay, Great. you can Good. do. But I would just make sure that you get whatever permits the town expects you if you're running raffles because that can get yes. you in a little trouble right. if you don't like that iPad thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to make sure you follow those procedures. Yeah. Okay. You don't want anybody coming yeah, and saying you're violating tax laws or anything like yeah. that. Right. So. Okay. Well, good luck. With well, that. yes. Sure thank you for stepping fine. up and doing it. I think oh. it sounds great. Thank you very and, uh, <laughs> and thank you for coming out in this weather. Yeah. Thank you for telling us. Great to see so you. So, since you've been in this room, have you heard about the Tuesday storm? Yeah, we have. Saturday and Sundays. I heard Saturday and Sunday. I didn't hear Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday. There's another foot coming. <laughs> but I, I don't have my sister out. I'm good. But it's <laughs> vacation <laughs> week, so I don't in, have to cancel school. So that's kind of a long. No term. problem. They're sending in more equipment from New York. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. More snow melters oh and they're trying goodness. to find more snow farms. But yeah, there's another one right behind me. Oh, I, didn't I, see I that. heard that Wednesday it was could be rainy so that all the snow that's on people's roofs is going to get four times heavier. Well, so I, the need to roof rake. Just I've been on well, my we roof that. Day <laughs> <since> that. <laughs> <last week. laughs> but Pentucket has been closed the whole week. The whole week. Yeah. Right. No, and my, my son plays for you Pentucket. know hockey yeah. for Pentucket yeah. and it's like they, they still have uh, you know practice but <laughs> Yeah. They're in a no different, different yeah. yeah. Well, we you know we definitely yeah. were ahead of that game because obviously once I you mean, have a roof you collapse, do? you don't want to ever see that again. Yeah. So we 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 actually <laughs> we, before the last storm we had made arrangements to to get all the snow off the roofs and then we actually cleared the courtyards at Pembroke so that you know the air ventilation fresh air was was there. So you so know. are you uh, all all over all schools? Yes, we're all schools. We're all schools, but we have a wonderful maintenance. Sleep? We have a, well, we, we, we're busy, but we have a maintenance um, director, Mike uh, Anderson, who does just a wonderful job, and he works very collaboratively. Peter Durkee, you know, I can't. Oh, yeah. I got to give a shout out to Peter Durkee and his his guys, and then whoever he contracts with, because if I say I'd really like to get a two hour delay, they do what they have to do to yeah. make it happen. You know, I mean, a couple times we were in by ourselves, but you know, at the end of the day, it worked out okay. So. You know, we we just we work in a we work in a great town that has a lot of great people yeah, that are committed wonderful. to working together. So, yeah. So we 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 weren't in an unsafe situation with our roofs. <laughs> yeah, because and we it's had excellent done it because time. you got them to go to school. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I know. I kept, Not that they really wanted I know, to. I, I know that I wasn't a hundred percent popular, but in June I might be more popular. <laughs> you will. Not with the seniors. Yeah, that's where they don't care. That's where the seniors. <laughs> when I go to school, they're like, Mrs. Jacobs, I think I smell a snow day on Tuesday. <laughs> Do you? Hey, well, you won't want to be here in June. Oh, well, I won't be. I'm a senior. Oh, okay. I get yeah, it. but you don't care about that. So you're not really caring about that, huh? No. So yeah, it is kind of funny. The kids are great, but. But thank you so much. We appreciate no, you. Thank yeah. you very thank you much. Very for much. So we're good to go then. You're good to go. Okay. Yes. Start fundraising. Hmm. <laughs> well, Does anybody okay. want to buy a lollipop? Wish us, <laughs> wish us luck with that one. Reach out for help. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be back. Damn, nice to see you. Honey. Great Bye -bye. to see you. Bye -bye. Too. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much.
Okay, we have the um, budget presentation. We do. Okay, so let's start with our our binder uh, cover. Uh, New Pembroke School. We we usually use student artwork, which we love to do, but uh, in this case, we're using the architect's rendition of the New Pembroke School because that's obviously a big thing that's going to be happening in the opening of the school this next year. So. Um, uh, well, I think maybe the best thing to do, but you tell me because it's really your review of the budget, um, is to just kind of briefly review my the contents of my letter mm -hmm. because that sort of gives an overview and then talk about some of the assumptions that we use to build the budget. And then we can certainly we go through however you want to do. If you just want to go um, section by section, we can definitely do that. Yeah, I think that would be good. Okay. And just reminding everybody, we have this meeting. And then we have next uh, the 26th, we have a public hearing on the budget at 645, so people would come in and yep. they want to make a comment. And then uh, the right, you have the discussion on the regular meeting on the 26th, and then the adoption of the budget would be at that special meeting we set on March 5th. So of course, you still can discuss it further if you need to even on that meeting, but that's when the, right now that's what's scheduled. Mm -hmm. So we're waiting to hear from FinCom because they're doing that marathon Saturday session that they do with the departments. We haven't been scheduled into that day in the past, but I'm hearing rumors that we might be. So that's March 7th, right? Yep. And But they don't have a time, they don't set, designate time, so you kinda gotta mm -hmm. go and I'm not sure anybody wants to follow the school budget, so I don't know if we'd be first or last, but I don't know. We'll have to see, um, like I said, or they may want to see us separately like they've done in the past, so we just wait for direction on that. Okay. Okay. So the uh, operating budget for the schools in FY16 will be $13,912,226. That actually represents a 2.46% increase over this fiscal year. Mm -hmm. So initially when we were given uh, directives from the town, they said, well, give us a level services budget, and then if you want something beyond that, like remember last year we asked for the tech director, so that was above level services, so they said just be prepared to defend it. Okay, so you know we began to, to start to do that, and then kind of the next word that came down was, well, but we really want you to be at 2.5%. Because this particular year, the taxpayers, you know, really are trying to look for a little bit of a break, and if everybody overall could sort of stick within that, it would be great. And of course, as I say in my notes, we're grateful to the town for all of the things they've done over the last four years, including the operating override, which, you know, people, since taxes increased for that, then of course the new school and the renovation at the high school. So we, you know, we understand that, you know, people are feeling an increased burden. So, you know, we, as an administrative team, we have worked really hard, and Lorene and Michael, as the budget and finance subcommittee, have also, you know, reviewed the budget, and we've had discussion. Um, we, you know, we we did our very best to get to two, two point two point five percent, and to ensure, because remember we're making a transition, so there are transition expenses as well, to make sure that we're not substantially cutting any programs and services that we're 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 cut, tightening our belts in some areas and um, there there is some some slight reductions in some places definitely but um, we're feeling like those reductions are not going to have a drastic impact on programs and services overall if we have to cut deeper then then we are starting to to go into to things that um, are going to have a more substantive uh, response so or impact right so when the when we break, break the budget down, the overall budget request I just told you was you know thirteen nine. Um, usually, what the FinCom will ask us for, because obviously when they look at all the pages, they're like, oh, that's all very nice, but what's the increase? So we um, you know they we so they want to know salaries, non salaries, and special education because they do understand that special education sometimes has. Uh, you know, impact on the budget that's a little harder to sort of quantify or control. So um, the salaries increase in this budget, there are going to be 11 million eight one ten five oh three, and that's a 4.4%, 4 4.46%. The non-salary items are 1,023719, and that actually represents a decrease of 5.05%. 
and, and you will go into the budget and you'll be able to see in each budget line if something's been reduced and the rationale for that. And then the special education budget um, is 886,000, the increase is 886,004 dollars. It is a minus 10.72 percent increase, but I want to make something really, really clear at the outset that that does not, that's usually, that's special ed tuition and transportation for students who need to go outside the district. That does not mean that the expenses are down. And when you get to the special ed section, you're going to notice the special ed expenses are actually up. But if you remember, we have circuit breaker funds, which are the reimbursement funds for extraordinary expenses for special education students that meet a certain <laughs> threshold. Mm -hmm. And we have a balance in circuit breaker. So our intention is to do what that money is for, which is to offset some of those costs. So it's going to be in the budget a minus 10 percent, but it's not a minus 10 percent in actual expenses. It's because we have an ability to offset with circuit breaker. Okay? In or and we're doing that, obviously, to hit the 2.5 percent. Right. Um, okay. So you know, there's a few different nuances in the budget because it's not as simple as just, uh, you know, building a level services budget because we're, we are opening the Pembroke School. So there does need to be some redirection of some resources. So if we turn to page two, I sort of detail for you what those features are. So the increase in salaries that, that you see for the 4.46 percent um, is caused by a couple of things. Um, the way you know how it's structured, we have step and scale for people until they get to step 11, and then beyond that, it's just the percentage increase for teachers that works. So um, with, we have a lot of young teachers, which is, has been great, but until those teachers get to step 11, there's a, there's a step, in, there's a step mm -hmm. that they get, which is actually a small built-in increase in addition to the overall percentage increase. So w because we have more of those young teachers, the step and scale uh, piece, you know, increased. And now Massachusetts certifications are that when we hire people, we're hiring people generally with a master's degree. Because once, once student, uh, teachers, as part of their certification process, they must have a master's degree mm -hmm. within a certain period of time. In the past, you might see teachers, we'd hire them at a bachelor's, one, two, three. Now it's really master's, mm -hmm. one, two, three. So that, that's an impact to the budget, obviously, because they're at a higher, higher uh, pay scale. Um, we have, there are a couple of new positions which we're going to show you uh, in the budget, and then there's you know contractual raises for union and non-union employees. So once all we total all that up, the increase was 4.46 percent. Special education costs. I just explained that to you, so I don't need to re revisit that again. And then the the new positions. So given the fact that we're not closing the Pearly School. If we were closing the Pearly School, we'd shift all the resources over. Some of them we might not need. We would reduce them. But we're not doing that. We're keeping the Pearly School open. And the plan, so that means that there are some positions that need to be maintained there. We will maintain all of our preschool programs. Um, we will, our plan that we're going to propose to you is that we want, we'll have two, two additional rooms in that hallway, that preschool hallway, because the kindergarten's going to Pembroke. So our plan is to hire, to increase by one preschool. That was something we talked about at budget and finance, and Margaret and I have talked about it extensively. Um, and the, the purpose for that would be that we would first, because we anticipate with the lottery that's coming up, that we may have people on the lottery we can't fill, we, they can't get a slot. So if there's a waiting list, the first priority would be, to new, for the new class would be to give the waiting list people the priority. And then we then we'd see if our teaching staff has, and, and all of our staff, not just our teaching staff, but our staff has any preschool children that, you know, would like to, to join our, our program. And then we would open slots to other people, assuming there's no other Georgetown people that want to ha have the opportunity. We would open it up to, um, you know, residents of local towns. Because what we're hearing is that there's not necessarily enough preschool opportunities for people in this area. So if we can help out with that, if we have spots available in a class we're opening, then why wouldn't we, why wouldn't we do that? But the first priority is and continues to be Georgetown families. So in years past, how many um, people have we had to turn down at Well, it, it varies from year to year. Um, you just, know, I just want a number. Well, what would you say? Well, it does depend. Do 
generally after the lottery, we might have maybe seven. Yeah, I was going to say five, seven. Yeah. But since we do it in March, and I always say to people, there is so much movement through the spring. Mm -hmm. the families move. Mm -hmm. um, you know, situations change, and so we're. It, it generally works that we, you know, we start the year with not very many people at all. You know, two or three. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some want two, some want three, some want five. So, you know, sometimes people sign up for five but can only do two. So there are, and there are people who move in over the summer that, But you're you know, confident that this extra will uh, fill? Will fill. Mm -hmm. I, that's our, that's our expectation. Um, so that would be one. And then the other is there's an additional room and um, the plan, and we would come back in March with a formal plan for this. But our, our interest is, uh, we have strong interest in creating a faculty daycare which would uh, allow our fact we have a lot of young teachers that are having children um, so we if we can provide a, a program you know in our district for them that's an incentive for them that's you know they can be more comfortable with their children okay. here and it would probably be we'd have, we're deciding it but it might be like you know 10 to uh, 12 to 15 people just a couple of infants and then probably through grade three because usually when kids get to three you know, people are making decisions about preschool and all of that. So three years old, not three. Yeah, three, yeah. three would probably be, be the, the top age. But can, can I just ask if this uh, other classroom was successful in the next year? Would we even have a lottery if we had enough space for everybody? It would a lot. Well, you never necessary? know if you're going to have enough space for everybody till they come to the meeting and sign up. Right? right. So if we don't need right. a lottery, we we wouldn't have one. But it seems that okay. in, we've needed one in well, the past. The other, the other fair right. thing that happens we don't know necessarily that we're going to have that other class yet. Sorry. Because we don't know necessarily that we're going to have that other class yet. I mean, it sounds like a great plan to me, but when we had the lottery this year, right. we don't we didn't know. Well, I think we're thinking with um, staff, with teachers and staff, there are children. You know, we, we know just anecdotally when we've discussed it. Right. Um, we have several families that indicate interest. Okay. So the other, the other fair thing that happens with a lottery is um, that it takes out of the equation who signs up first. Yeah. You know, there are only so many spots. You know, you have Monday through Friday, but then you've got Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday. Oh, right. So if you don't have the lottery, then it's, you know, well, I got my money in first, but it, it just, I have found that since we've done the lottery, there have been very few if that any resolves issues. those right. issues. Right. Okay. That's been eliminated. Okay. Right. So we're interested in doing a faculty daycare of which we would, you know, provide information for you so you could see how it worked. Our goal is to do it in March because we, we really want to respect the fact that people would be looking now for those kind yeah. of services. We don't want to wait until June and say, oh, and by the way, we have this opportunity that nobody can take advantage of because they've committed somewhere else. So were you right. going to other districts that have that now and just seeing like how that program Well, we actually have gotten information uh, on a couple. Okay. Um, so we're also doing some research on, you know, what is the right price, mm. you know what I mean, because we we're not we're not doing it to make a, a, a ton of money, a ton of money off our teachers money. but we are we are it is a revenue generator absolutely <laughs> but it's not you know we, we certainly don't want to charge our teachers more than the sort of the going rate and what's fair and right so we're, we're trying to do some salary comparisons and some look at the staffing patterns and all of that that's why we don't have it ready for you now because that's something we're, we're doing as an ongoing basis um, the other thing that Donna's researching is um, uh, we have students who are getting to the age, you know, on our, our autism spectrum ASD programs at the high school that are getting to the age where they're, they're needing an 18 to 22 year old program because the special education law requires that students have the opportunity to, uh, you know, have schools, public school services uh, until their 22nd birthday. Um, unless they graduate, unless they graduate. but right. in this case, you know, if, if the children don't graduate and then other districts have the same need. So um, we've been, you know, looking into um, seeing if we could work with other districts and um, offer this program and then tuition students from other districts in and provide a, a nice program. And, and that, that would allow this, these, you know, students in the program to have work opportunities and, um, you know, learn greater life skills, independence, independent living. Um, and, you know, we've got some, Donna's got some great plans for that. It's just we're in the planning phase of how it can look, and sh she's talking to some other districts about it at the same time. So those are all things that we would envision having at Pearly um, next year. Um, but in terms of new positions, um, at, 
and they're not really new positions at Purley. We, but we do need to maintain a full-time nurse because we are going to have students with, as we do now, that have you know um, allergies and you know the medication needs, and there's just a, a lot of involved kids now, you know. So we do need to maintain the nurse. Um, we do need to maintain um, a full-time secretary um, and full year. And anybody that's affected by this in terms of their position, we've already spoken to personally. They, they already know what the, what the plan is. So I think we can say that um, Camille Early, um, who is the current Pearly secretary, is going to be remaining at Pearly. So she'll handle the preschool responsibilities, which makes sense because she's already doing that. She knows that process in and out. People from families are familiar with her. Um, and she will also uh, spend some of her time working as, as Julie's administrative assistant because as we've talked about before, you know, with Ju the volume of work that Julie has with curriculum, she has no clerical support other than what she can get from help from the secretaries who've been great. But she needs a designated, uh, a designated uh, you know, person to help her. And Camille actually used to be the former school committee secretary, so she's uh -huh. very efficient and, you know, very... Um, great typist and all of that. So so Camille Camille will remain at um, at uh, Pearly. Uh, Lu nurse Louise will remain also as the nurse at um, Pearly. And then a full-time day custodian, um, because obviously there's going to be not only these programs, but the senior center next January is going to be coming into Pearly, as well as all of the central office operations like special education, um, you know, maintenance, technology, curriculum, everybody's coming to Pearly. So that's going to be, those services are going to be centralized there as well. So there'll be more than enough work for a day custodian. Um, currently we have a night custodian, but as you'll learn in a minute, we're redirecting that amount, that money toward the position that we need at Pembroke. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, these, pr these positions, uh, you'll be able to see in the budget because we'll point them out for you. Um, some of these positions um, can fit in the revolving account that we have at Pearly, but not all of them can fit fully there. So some portion of these positions I'm talking to you about are reflected actually in this budget that we're talking about. Um, so now if we talk about uh, at Pembroke. So we've got more kids coming to Pembroke. So we have uh, put in the budget a clerk typist, which would provide secretarial, additional secretarial support, similar to what we do like in the middle school right now. We have a clerk typist who handles the middle school, um, you know, re reception kind of thing, uh, does some, a little bit of work for the assistant principal, but, you know, contacts families, you know, answers emails. So Diane Collins will obviously remain as the um, I'd say the principal secretary there in terms of the main the main uh, the main organizer of the office and then we will uh, be hiring uh, someone a clerk typist who will um, work their school year so Diane's a full year employee uh, we would this per second person would be school year only but if we needed to have some summer days because Diane's on vacation or Margaret needs it or there's supplies coming in and we need to make sure there's double duty there, we, we would be prepared to um, provide some per diem uh, support there mm -hmm. as well. Now we, we also, as I said, we're bringing a couple hundred kids over there. So we also have a need for nurse, for some support for the nurse. So um, Kathy Hatch will continue to be the nurse um, at Pembroke. Uh, you know, talking with the medical folks right now, you know, um, about what the options might be. What we put in the budget, and this is kind of the number we're, we're sticking with, um, was 20360 So our first thought was, well, let's, let's, let's make sure she gets some support with triage. So the child comes down and says, oh, I have a headache. Okay, honey, here's an ice pack. You sit here for a couple minutes. That doesn't necessarily need to be a nurse, you know, a nurse hatch issue. But somebody that could help with some of those kind of things. You've got a bloody nose. Okay, let me let me help you. And if the nurse needs to see her, him or her, it would happen. But it's also somebody to help with the clerical work because there's a lot of paperwork. There's a lot of follow up with families. Um, there's height, weights, all those. There's things that, that take a lot of the nurse's time. Um, 
so that was our thinking and we're we're thinking that's what we're doing however in talking a little bit more about the nurses they're they're wondering if we we might reconsider looking at you know they know 20,000 isn't going to buy them a full-time LPN or a full-time RN but you know maybe their preference would be that we hire for that 20,000 three day a week LPN. I, I don't think we want to micromanage that. I'm fine with, you know, taking their input and seeing, you know, we want to get the best value. But we haven't had a chance to talk to all the nurses, so that's something that I'd definitely like to do. So right now, for the purposes of this discussion, for the budget, we're just working with the number of 20,360. And that's- Did you get an LPN for three days for that amount? Yeah, I, that's what I don't know, Barbie. So they- would I think that they're telling me you can. I don't okay. know. I don't know. I'm not. So we're sticking with that dollar. So, but the you dollar can. figure is what we're sticking with. Okay. There may be some other certification. Too. Maybe that's why I think the I'd, I'd no. like to take the input of the medical people. How do they? How, what do they feel is going to get the best coverage and the, you know the best service for the students yeah. there, um, and the best support for for what the nurse actually needs to be able to be comfortable doing her job. Okay. Then in terms of the custodial maintenance. So as I explain in the notes. Right now, the square footage of the Pembroke School is 28,000 square feet. The new Pembroke is 98,000 square feet. So we currently have two custodians. That's not sufficient. I think we'd all agree. So what we've done is, you know, this year in the budget for 15, we have um, a, a night guy at Purley. And then we also have funds because when the construction project was going on and we were worried about the dust, mm -hmm. if you remember, we hired a part-time dust guy for lack of a better word so that the dust guy <laughs> and the night guy combined for the salary of a third custodian at the school and we need so that's not new money that's just a redirection right so we need four custodians in order to to meet the I'd say level three standard of cleanliness which is not white glove but it's it's clean so um, so that we're looking for the salary for the fourth custodian. So that is actually in the budget. You'll see that that's reflected in the budget. That is a, and I told the town when we defended the school, I said, that's what you're going to need. You're going to need an extra custodian. Um, now, the other thing that we we really are going to need, I don't know how much we're going to need it this next year, but we will need it the following year. So we need to fire the shot across the bow that it has to happen in FY17, and that is a maintenance person because we're going to have a very sophisticated you know system there um, computerized system we're going to have all brand new fields so those fields aren't going to be online until the summer of 2016 mm -hmm. that's why we're not we're not putting it in the we're not recommending it go into budget this year mm -hmm. because I don't know that they'd have as much to do this year but next year when all those fields are online and all the flower beds and all the that's a big school to maintain we would be asking for another maintenance, maintenance person um, you know we can talk to the town when we talk to the FinCom about you know because I know that we've been working on shared maintenance with um, some Mike's been doing a great job and I've had been involved in several meetings you know at some point the town would like to consider you know us sharing services you know with the town in terms of a centralized maintenance and you know, we see some very strong benefits for that we also say there's some questions we have to fully resolve but but they were hoping we would put in a full-time maintenance person and a full-time HVAC system person in order to hit two and a half percent those are not in this budget so if there's another another conversation with the town about you know how we might you know hire those people with some degree of you know togetherness then I, I think we should have that conversation because I think there there is a need for it but like I said this because we're not bringing all those fields online this year we've elected not to put the budget put that in the budget although I want to identify it as a need mm -hmm. okay um, so oh and then because uh, we have evaluated all of the the ed plans and the need for um, for services we are we have added a 0.5 special education teacher now we have a 0.5 special education teacher at Purley now so it would really be extending that person to full-time and that way we can cover all of the educational plans that we we know about 
Um, and that person is fine with the well, that, full time? Yeah, we, that's not going to be a problem. Okay. Yeah. So then you go to the next category of people, which we call redirection of staff from the middle school to Pembroke. Um, so since the sixth grade is moving, mm -hmm. we need five <laughs> core we need five <laughs> core academic teachers, which we're going to talk a little bit of how that's going to look when we get to the Pembroke transition discussion. But for the purpose of this discussion, the salary uh, salaries of five academic teachers, which total three hundred and eleven nine sixty four. We also are moving the, six, the special education teacher that works with the sixth grade students is going to move to Pembroke. And then um, in order to make the um, situation where we're trying to do a transition with band and chorus, right? So K through five will be um, the program Tyler offers uh, now as it is now. It's more of an integrated music program. And then in sixth grade, students will have the opportunity to choose band or chorus so it won't be the continuation of the program that Tyler's doing, it'll be band or chorus. And in order to make that work, because Tyler hasn't figured out how to clone himself and divide himself to be in the same place for two things in one period, um, the choral teacher from the middle school is going to come. Peter's done a great job, you know, working on it because there's a rotating schedule at the high school and middle oh, school. Oh, we know. So, so you can't you, you can't say, oh, it's going to be a different day every time every day at when the teacher's available at Pembroke, you have to say, this is sixth grade music, and it's like that every day. So Peter's been able to give G Block the opportunity, you know, to have the G Block choral teacher come over and work with Tyler to split that responsibility yeah. in that particular day that they have music, each class has music. And then, in a way, that makes sense because, you know, Tyler does the band. So it doesn't really make sense if Anthony came over to teach the music and that Tyler does the band. And that so and the choral teacher is the choral teacher that the seventh graders will have. So it makes sense to have that transition. transition. Yeah, so sure. after all of that, all is said and done, that's how we plan to make that transition. So in order to make that work, the point two FTE of the choral teacher has to be redirected to the Pembroke budget. Again, you'll see that pulled out in um, in the sub pages that we're going to talk about. Okay, so a level services budget for our, without adding anything, was 3%. Okay. That's what I was wondering, yeah. So if we needed to add things, that doesn't go in the right direction, right? It doesn't go closer to 2.5%. So in order to hit 2.5%, we had to make some reductions in a, you know, in a couple places. So the, the proposed reductions, in order to help us get there, um, and most of this is as a result of the elimination of the sixth grade from the middle school because the core teachers are coming, but then there are, spe there are people in specialist subjects that actually were responsible for educate, you know, for working with the sixth grade that they no longer will need to work with the sixth grade because that's all going to be handled by the specialists at Pembroke. Um, so 0.6 FTE art teacher, again, because that teacher worked with the sixth grade. 0.4 physical education teacher. 0.2 music teacher, 0.2 math teacher. So that, you know how uh, Peter's explained in the past that you have, like let's say in seventh grade, you have four core teachers, but you have more sections than that. Mm -hmm. So there are people who teach off the team, right? So as a result of the sixth grade going, there's not a need for that extra 0.2 math person. And then the, this was, Lorraine, mean, I cleaned this up a little because we met the other day. So 0.4 FTE theater arts. So theater arts falls into, Peter, you're going to have to help me with this, but theater arts falls into the English department, really, right? So um, the, because you're not servicing the sixth grade anymore, right, the, um, the te oh, Peter, you're going to have to help me. So the teacher that was teaching it is an English teacher. In this year's budget, there's a 0.5 theater arts position for the middle school. And uh, we weren't able to find the teacher. So we filled it with current teachers teaching beyond their caseload for, right. for a pay. And English teachers. Mm -hmm. English teachers. So we've cut that 0.5 position, 
which we only needed 0 0.4 of because the sixth grade left. So there's so there's still seventh and eighth grade theater arts, and it. But there's no need for teachers to teach outside their right. Like it, to it totals 0.4, so I had to redirect English teachers into that spot. So the bottom line is, is a 0.4 cut in theater arts, but we are still providing that because nobody service. now has to teach extra because what was happening is those two of those teachers didn't didn't have a prep they chose to teach an extra class so with the sixth grade moving it, they, they don't need to teach an extra class so seventh there's enough for seventh and eighth grade to right. still have so theater arts it, the easiest way to think of it is rather than cutting uh, 0.4 of an English teacher we move them into the theater spot Creative. I know that's I know that's complicated. No, it's creative. It took me a while. I'm still trying to figure it out, but Peter understands it. So you told me this the other day, I and know, you said but it I, fine. I think I got it messed up because I thought it was social studies <laughs> teachers, fine. right? I thought it, it was, was social studies. I know, I know, I know. No, you said English because I remember saying English, and no, I don't know. I think I get I'm getting it now. But all we need to know is when Peter schedules the building, he can schedule seventh and eighth grade theater arts. That's what we care about. Okay, okay. 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 they're gonna have theater arts. That's okay. the message. Okay. 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 Because so, they love theater arts. Right, exactly. They so do a great job. So with making those reductions, which basically account for not having the sixth grade anymore, we also looked at some other reductions. So um, the the legal services, that's the that's the um, you know, the sort of our central office legal services because Donna Strait also has a, a line for legal services. So the special ed legal services is remaining the same as it, it's been. It's level funded. But usually um, the legal services uh, changes a little depending on what um, we need the attorney to help us with. So in a negotiations year, some years we, we put more in because we anticipate it's going to be more time because next year we're not anticipating that we have a need for that. We're, mm -hmm. we're thinking it's, we're not reducing at all, we're just reducing it by that amount, thinking that we're safe in doing so. The other thing is because we're talking about maintenance contact contracted services, um, Mike, because we're opening a brand new building, this and, beca to see. and because we're opening, you know, we're renovating the middle high school, um, and because Pearly, after we do the roof, will be in really great shape. We're not anticipating as many projects because in the past we've had to have money to sort of fix things to keep them going. We, we're not expecting that next year. Next year we're, we're feeling like if there's a year that we think we might safely be able to reduce that particular mm -hmm. line, it would be next year when you're opening up these beautiful brand new spaces. You know, it doesn't mean we don't have a need for projects. That's why we're, right. we're just reducing it by $25,000. Um, and maintain. No, I asked you. Mike feels yeah, comfortable we, doing that. Yeah, we we well, talked with him. Right, and what we talked about was we, we really don't know what it's going to cost us to maintain the Pembroke School, like the gray water system, but it will give us the year to measure. We shouldn't have any repairs. The whole right. new roof at the high school, all those new units. I mean, that, those mm -hmm. where we are getting That's stuck. Where we were getting stuck. Um, there should be guarantees. The high school is getting the new phone system. That was one place we keep, you know, phones keep crashing or whatever. So. Besides a couple of elevator issues, um, there really shouldn't be anything. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, and it will give us next year to measure what it will cost us to maintain the systems at, at Pembroke. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So that's why we're suggesting that for this year. And then um, there's a there's a, a a little bit of a reduction in um, elementary specials, uh, particularly uh, point one FTE, which is about three hours in music and point one in physical education. So in thinking about how, how much time the specialists, how many periods the specialists will teach, we're working obviously with the union on some things related to guaranteed prep time. And so based on the number of sections and the number of people, um, the building can be scheduled with everybody having you know, a guaranteed prep time and having a sort of an equal teaching load. Um, and will, of course, as we start doing the schedules, developing the schedules, will involve the specialist in, you know, helping us figure out what's the best way to, to schedule. But that that's a reduction of twelve thousand uh, dollars. Adding three grades, and we're because yep yep because 
um, when you look at the the teaching periods now, you know mm-hmm. there, there are a couple of places where there, you know, there are more than one teaching period that's sort of open for for some of the specialists. Mm-hmm. So if you assume that when sixth grade comes down, that would fill one period, and with K, if one comes down, you f- you fill another. So there's still a gap for at least one grade. Okay. So a lot of the specialists, some of the specialists will be point twos, but because of the that's why we need the specialists mm-hmm. to help us because. You know, you have to figure out how you distribute that, right? So that everybody can work during the hours they have to work, and everybody gets a great. I mean, it's not program. a lot. It's I'm not sure. a lot, no. But we're going to have so many more students that so just. Well, that's why I said, based on what we understand about okay. the schedule, that can happen. You okay. know, we'll, we'll we'll look at that just carefully. Just um, yep. So, in, and also just pointing out, you know, how the budget book works. You're going to get some information in the back here on revolving accounts and grants. Yeah. Because we often say that we're running, what do we say, 13.9? We're running a 13.9 million dollar operation, but we're really not. We're running more like a 15 million dollar operation. By the time you look at our grants and revolving accounts, and 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 as as I always say to you, you know, there's a couple of those revolving accounts that I always worry about, like mm-hmm. school choice and and uh, preschool revolving. Uh, generating additional revenue at Pearly would help with that. Will help with that, but um, you know. I do think we over rely on grants and revolving accounts, and it, it's but it's how we keep our budget at 2.5 percent. Right. Um, so I, I did talk to you about the the generation of the additional revenue, which I talked about, um, and then just finally, I mean, I I think there's a lot of complicated nuances in building a budget, especially when it's mm-hmm. when you're trying to get the highest value for the dollars that you have and oh, yeah. protect the programs that are most you know critical because it that's 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 key um, so our our sense in this budget is that we will be able to obtain you know uh, do our objectives based on uh, what we're talking about still move into a new school maintain the the pearly school and um, you know and maintain the programs and services the the, the loss or the the difference at the middle high school may be you know Peter may have to increase class sizes by consolidating a couple of courses that he might need to consolidate or maybe he'll reduce an elective if he has to but it's not programs big programs it's not we're not having 40 kids in a class that's not what we're talking about here but you know he he's he knows how to schedule you know in a way that you know we will get the greatest value for the students given the resources that we have there so you know, very much want to thank Lorene and, and Michael for, you know, working with us on the budget, uh, giving us their insight and perspectives. And I know, Barbie, you, you were helpful as well. Uh, you know, the administrative team can't say enough about, you know, the fact that I, as I put in here that, you know, you have to advocate for your own programs, right? Otherwise, otherwise who's going to, right? So they each have, a, you know, strong opinions about what they'd like to see in their programs and in their schools. But when we sit together as a team and we have to figure out, okay, what what are we going to do here? You know, it's amazing how how everybody has that sense of teamwork and that we're gonna we're gonna all do the give and take. And at the end of the day, we're gonna be proud of what we put together, knowing that maybe it isn't a hundred percent of what we would want, but it it really does reflect, you know, the basis of what we need. Right. So I I do think that, you know, I, as I put in here, I'm I'm very grateful to work in a place because it doesn't happen everywhere. Where, where people can, can have that balance between, you know, strongly, you know, advocating for what you need, but also being able to put it aside and, and say, okay, we're a district <laughs> team. So I, I always want to recognize, and, and Joan has done uh, a lot, a lot of work and, and has sat many hours with me, you know, trying to strategize and some, some things. And, you know, again, you know, we're, we're tremendously grateful. And then I just conclude here by, I just think it needs to be said publicly that we are extremely grateful to the taxpayers of Georgetown for their continued support of schools. Yep, absolutely. As demonstrated by, you know, annual funding increases, funding and operation override four year, several years ago, new Pembroke school building project, middle high school renovation project, and all the financial assistance that gets provided for sort of ex- extraordinary special ed costs when we've run into a situation when we've had to go to the town you know we they've understood our situation um, so you know we we do think we have a good product for our for, for what the taxpayers get but it we would be remiss if we didn't emphasize how much we do appreciate you know the continued support from the town mm-hmm. so um, so if you just keep kind of going through section B is just the budget calendar which we've gone over Obviously, Section C, you know, we always want to remember kind of everything we do should tie back into our mission. Yep. 
and, and our belief statement and in, in, in our strategic plan. So <laughs> we always include that as a reminder of that. And then um, when we start building the budget, we do, we do start with some basic assumptions. And so I'll just quickly run through those and then we can go through the sections you'd like to see. So when we developed the FY budget proposal, the following methods were, were used to project expenditures. So we did tell you the budget was based on a 2.5% increase as requested by the town administrator. But it does not represent a level services budget. Right? There are some reductions in order to get to that number and to be able to add the core things that we know we needed to add. Um, salaries are set according to negotiated contracts. So. Um, you know, just so you know, that that does inc include uh, the step increases for the teachers, you know, the 2% increase for the paraprofessionals and tutors, which we had already agreed to, as well as the 2% increase for custodial staff and food services staff that we had already agreed to. Um, and then raises for the teachers and administrators are currently being negotiated. So that's not, you know, pulled out here. Um, so I already talked to you about several of our positions are funded by whole, in whole or part by federal grants. Um, and that, so that's just important for you to know, although we do want you to know that the general trend in grant funding for some of our entitlement grants is definitely shrinking, um, shifting the cost of maintaining those positions to the local community. So for example, we just heard really recently that the kindergarten grants are being reduced. The governor had put that in his 9C cuts so we're looking at what that means because what we do with that money is we pay for a paraprofessional in each preschool. So depending on what that cut is, we either have to cut something else in order to make that possible for us to continue to fund those aids in the budget or we reduce the number of aids. I mean, th those kind of things have to be discussed. But, you know, we just want you to know, and, and Julie can tell you the Title I grant has sort of steadily uh, special it's special ed grant they they sort of steadily go down so you have to be careful that we don't put too many expenses on those because then it it's not possible to fund them it has to go somewhere either it gets cut or it goes in the budget um, uh, let's see oh, special education tuitions and special ed transportation um, we did budget a four percent increase in the contract rates for the existing students um, let's see most non salary lines are level funded that's why you see the minus, uh, with the exception of the maintenance contracted services, which we talked to you about reducing. That's what accounts for that, that uh, minus uh, percentage increase. Um, there are no, Chris has put, Chris Franco has put his budget in here as he always does. There are no increases in athletics included in this budget as a result of the greater participation in athletes. So remember Chris had said before that he has, it, the only way he can really keep his, without increasing user fees, which we've want, not wanted to do, the only thing, other option he has is to increase participation. And thankfully, we have increased participation. So that's not making it necessary to, to adjust um, that budget, um, uh, increase the budget. Um, School choice revenue will be decreased by the graduation of two students. So when you talk about it in March, I think we usually talk about school choice. Um, we will determine if there are slots available, if we want to make slots available. But this budget assumes that there's going to be no increase in potential slots. We didn't, we didn't budget for it. Um, so current staffing and appropriate operational budgets at Purley and the middle schools have been transferred to Pembroke. So you, you, I've told you about what, what those specifically are, but you'll see it when you look at the back, the backup. Um, there are, there are additional positions, which I talked to you about already included in the transition from Purley, from Pembroke, uh, to Pembroke. And, um, bus transportation, I think is something that we have to chat about for a minute. Mm. So we currently, as you know, have five buses, and we put five buses in our, in our budget again. Our hope and dream was that because well, we were moving to a new school, wouldn't it be a wonderful opportunity to not have to do a double bus run? Because it educationally doesn't make sense. A lot of parents don't take advantage of the, of the bus options, I think somehow sometimes because of the fact that your child has to go to school an hour early or get home an hour late. Right. So I don't know if that's the reason, but I think it's definitely a factor. 
Um, so it would we've we've been able to manage it in the past. So now the sh the second run is a shorter run, as opposed to everybody has to you have, the buses have to go all over town once and then all over town twice. It now it's all over town and then shorter, more specific runs, but it's still a double bus run. So, as you know, we went out to bid for, um, you know, the next bus contract that we needed to do next, we're three years, right, Joan? Yeah, mm -hmm. three years. And Joan opened the bid yesterday. We had one. We anticipated we'd have one. We're, we're kind of small. You know, the bigger companies don't want to bother with five Didn't buses, frankly. Like, I know. We had one. one. It was North Reading Transportation, which we have been working with. We are happy with them. We don't. I mean, they've been very easy to deal with. We, and we, you know, obviously we anticipated that the bus cost was going to go up. We had built in a 5% increase, but it's a little more than that. Um, however, we don't feel like it's an outrageous increase. It's just an increase. So it, if we needed, if we wanted seven buses, we would need $139,000 more. Ooh. Well, we were thinking a hundred, so yeah, yeah. It's that's what I said. It, I mean, it's not a, it's not way off. No, but when you think that one percent of your budget is one hundred and thirty thousand dollars, so that's thirty nine thousand. It was one hundred thirty nine thousand. Was okay. the I mean, Joan probably so has the more specific numbers. Forty thousand more over. What in you fact, thought. yeah. So. Again, the money we put in the budget was not enough. For the five. Right. So, so I can tell you that what it was specifically. So um, for five buses, um, we're, short, we're short in this budget $36,810. For just the five. That's just the five. 36 how much? 36810 So that At was the, an increase of how much? What's the percentage? Uh, what was the percentage, Joan? Um, you budgeted for five. The, okay, the current bus, the current was two twenty eight six uh, six ninety, and then that's what we budgeted. That's what we yeah. That's why that's what I have for current buses, and then but five buses was two sixty five five hundred. No, current current budget because the current bus contract is two seventeen. Oh, and okay. I added five percent okay. to the budget. Right. Okay. okay. So right. So what's in the budget that we were anticipating it would There's cost us is two twenty eight six ninety. Okay. The actual number is two sixty five oh. five hundred. And the price yes. of gas has gone down so much. Well, it's going up again. It's creeping up. Again. I don't know. Yeah. If we wanted six buses, okay, split it, split the middle. We need eighty nine thousand nine ten, and then it's one forty three zero ten. If for for seven buses, it's basically two ninety five per bus per day. Right. So a cost of one bus, regardless, it's just a cost of one bus is fifty three thousand one hundred dollars for wow. the year. Wow. So I mean, I don't know that we're going to get our hope and dream, but we did not put it in the budget. We all we put in the budget was the five buses. That was discussion. Then the discussion was, discussion. could we then go maybe to, when we go to the FinCom and say, right. out of free cash, would there be an opportunity for you to maybe help us? Because we would try to make our case too. that it's not educationally making sense. Um, because we spend $38,000 hiring people to babysit the kids, you know, and maybe we don't need to be spending that. And that's at a rate of, we, we figured that 38000 is what we pay for that's babysitting. Right. That's right. Okay. And then we were thinking, well, maybe what we could do well, is start to hundred budget, again. right? Mm -hmm. I put it. Yeah, I we put, put it back, it back in. in the budget. We had no choice. Right. We couldn't take it out because we yeah, we still have the kids coming. So. So if you took out the thirty-eight, what was what's the actual increase that you need for the two for the two additional buses? Because you could take out the thirty-eight thousand if you. 30, it's thirty-three. Thirty-three. You can take out the thirty-three though if you got additional funding for the two buses, right? Right. So yes. That's at? that's so what, what we, would that number reduce by? We need one forty three. So, so one forty three minus thirty three. Right. Yeah. So about one hundred and ten. Yeah. One hundred and ten. So the other thing we we thought about was well maybe what we could do, because I think there's there's interest in this. One and a half miles from your house, based on the GPS that's in TransFinder, not everybody's individual GPS, because you have to have some standard. 
is 1.5 or out is where you qualify for the bus. But there are people who are saying, well, you know what? We live a mile or between a mile and a mile and a half. And man, it would be great for us to be able to ride the bus. So we thought, well, one of the things we could do is we might be able to offset the cost. So we looked at what other towns do. And if you, if you lived within that range, then, and you wanted to ride the bus or have your child ride the bus, then, you know, it'd be a dollar a day or, so $180 a year or $200 a year. That's kind of their growing rate. Although some districts, it's like two and $300. I don't know how they get away with that, but they do. Um, I know, John, John's might going. larger towns, too. I don't larger. know. It just doesn't set well with me, you know. So I, I wouldn't recommend that. But, but anyway, the point would be, you know, maybe we could, fill a need that some of the parents might have and then you offset the cost of the extra buses. I don't know if we're going to be able to do that if we have five buses because we might not have enough seats, but we'll have to think about it. Right, and if you put in a request for the seven for the additional funds, you can't guarantee what exactly. that offset would be. Exactly. Right. So I, I, if the town said, well, you will work with you, you but, but, yeah, but yeah, you have to sell some seats for us. We'd be happy to do that. I just, like you said, we can't guarantee how many people would. How many. I actually have talked to lots of people over the years that have said, oh, man, you know, I, I live 1.3 miles. You know, can't you let me on the bus? So I don't know. Maybe those people, and people have said to me, well, I'll pay for that. So again, I think we, we haven't put it in the budget. I'm just telling you about what the conversations have been because we're, we're trying right. to meet multiple needs here. But at the very least, we have to come up with the money we're short for the five buses and the increase, which is the 30. We, we, have, we will have a plan for you. I mean, we will have a suggestion for you about that at the 26th, but we haven't had a chance to sort of get together and talk about what, we, what we'd think. Um, and that's 36 eight. 36 Okay, and then you flip to the next page. You've got the, the nice little pie graph that basically breaks down you know, how much is, what percentage of the budget is administration, instruction, instructional support, special education, employee benefits, athletics, non-instruction, and buildings and grounds. So you, you can take a look at that and do you have any particular questions. I mean, this is pretty standard, you know, in what it you see. It changed 1%. I forget where, but from last year it changed 1%. Yeah. But it's pretty standard in what you see in a lot of school yeah. budgets. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how it kind of breaks down. It's really nice to be chart. Yeah, it's, it's a helpful, yeah, yeah, it works out well. Joan There's did visual a nice people. job on it. For visual okay. people, yes, right? Yes. Okay, so then, then you, and this is up to you, how you want to proceed. If you want to go through each of these or you want to go through a couple of them and finish, finish going through them the next time, whether you want to take it home, look through it, and then come prepared with any questions you have the next time, it's really up to you how, how you want to do this. Okay. Um, I looked this over this evening for a couple of hours before the meeting, um, but I could certainly use a couple more hours to look it over. Um, Laureen probably knows these numbers by heart. Not by heart, but I've gone through it. I what feel, about you? I feel pretty comfortable with the exception of the open questions that we've got to resolve. The, um, the, biggest, the, the biggest pages you'll see changes on, obviously, are... Um, Probably in Pembroke. Right. Probably almost everything is zeroed out except the things that right. Carol spoke about. And in Pembroke, everything has changed. Yeah. Everything looks like it grew tremendously, but you know, it's all the it's like it's redirection all of everything. So there really isn't much change in this budget at all. I mean, I, I, I think the way you've put this together is beautiful and clear, and I really appreciate all the hard work that's gone into this. It's, um, I think, again, you know, the Finance Committee is going to be very pleased. I would love to see some of this up in a PowerPoint, <laughs> just, you know, for the community and, and for people who are looking for just to grab highlights and sure. a mm -hmm. quick understanding. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would just go to, you know, numbers that jump out at me at huge differences. Sure. Um, could you just explain the employee benefits here from FY15 revised to FY16 proposal? So what, what's going, what's happening here? So. When we build a budget, especially in a negotiation year, you know we're not sure what the um, money's going to be, whether it's for um, administrators or whatever. 
um, so say last year we might have had money put in that line um, for our raises mm -hmm. say I think it was like thirty thousand dollars budgeted so once the school year starts and Carol negotiates all our contracts I take that thirty thousand dollars and I spread it out into everybody's salary line and that zeroes out that line so every single year and that's a it's a good question but every single year you'll see the revised budget compared to what the projected budget is is a huge discrepancy because I take that money and I filter it to all the lines once the budget's passed and she negotiates all the contracts if you okay. sickly buy okay. back or employ you know we don't have any re the retirement incentives right. but all of that gets reflected in that line okay where are you Pam tab D just right here no yeah, yeah tab D the oh yeah, summary see, you're in the summary so you right. see right there the employee benefits yes. yep mm -hmm. yep it's a big yeah, she's in the summary yeah. And you know we we will post this on the website because if people want to come and make a comment on the budget, they should see what they're commenting on. Yeah, Barry, do it. Too yeah, late. but so when the public looks at it, we'll, just so they remember that for each section. So if you go like just say to the section G, which is Pembroke, it there's a, a little write up about the school at the top, and then there's an enrollment. So you can see how that breaks down by grade, mm -hmm. um, class size is there as well. Then. For every, for every account that Joan lists here on the, on the summary page, so if somebody wanted to say, well, gee, I wonder what's, um, I wonder what's going on with line, you know, this line on, uh, you know, art teacher salary. Well, that's not bad. That's a bad choice. Uh, supplies and math. You know, they're going to they're gonna go to the bottom and they're going to find that same line and it's going to tell you exactly what's in the line. So there's no question about, like, if we reduce something or we added something, then the line is going to be clearly it's delineated. It's the explanation. Yes. So, because sometimes when people look at a budget, they'll go, why right. did it go down 50 or up 57 percent? Sounds right. like such a lot. Right. But then you go but and you look at the, the specific here. there, the explanation yeah. is there. That's awesome. That's great. The other thing that I think is important to note is, you know, when you look at the the full year 15 compared to the 16 yeah. well that's the budget it's the spend it's what you actually spent right so it's not like it's a it's a budget that you develop but you spent less so this is your run rate this is what you spent right right so you're really just looking for the things that are jumping out right Right, and little little expenses sometimes look like when they're changing, they look like bigger percentages. But if you go back in well, and say, well, you know, little numbers sometimes make bigger percent look like bigger percents. Yeah, right. But as Lorraine said, some, it's not what we budgeted last year; it's what we spent. It's what you spent. Yeah. That's different. Yeah. The numbers are certainly consistent. I mean, some jump out at me. Mm -hmm. um, tutors and aides and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the build, you know, we had some yeah, that's buildings. The, the, buildings and the, the, the tutors and aides is a function of building our own in-house special ed programs. Yeah. I don't know, I'm just thinking with, without Michelle and, and without Michael and Alana here. Mm -hmm. um, I ask whatever questions need, that you would like, you know, but more, I'm certainly going to ask. I mean, I'm certainly going to be looking at this further. Mm -hmm. um, just do you know what goes into campus safety line? Yeah, that's, um, well, actually, if you look, it's that 33909. Mm -hmm. And campus safety, this, this budget is built uh, according to how I have to report to the state at the end of the year okay. so that's a section on the state report mm -hmm. so campus safety would be the transportation supervisors it doesn't sound right oh, yeah. but well, you call them babysitters yeah. but no <laughs> transportation aids is like, what they right. are but, 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 but that's what you're talking about like <laughs> to watch the kids we do before and after babysitters? school when they're waiting for the buses that's well right. that has to go in a category so i have to figure out where does that go so it's really campus, campus yeah. safety because otherwise, okay. what Joan, if Joan doesn't link it to what her state report is, then she has to literally be right. doing then two separate be, documents and then doing a crosswalk, which is a lot more effort. Well, this is what the state wants you to be doing yeah. anyway. I, mean, I don't know why. But. I, I, did, um, I did ask you in an earlier email today, I don't even know if you, you saw it, 
because in years past we have had a breakdown of each individual employee of what they make. Not for a long time. Not, since not back well, until the George I'm on days. My, well, I'm on my fourth year, so it's not that long ago. I don't remember us ever having in your fourth year. Really? I'm in my fourth year. I know, but you, and you've we, seen that? Yeah. Yep. Oh, that was under Jim. I think it was Jim. It was Jim. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how difficult is that? Well, it's not difficult because I have it because that's how I got my yeah, numbers to fit into the budget. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a staffing pattern. So you can provide that? Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about why you want that. So we don't do need to talk about that, but I'd like to hear a little bit more about why you want that okay. information. I'm not saying we'll provide it if you want it. It's just a question of I'm wondering why you want it. So let's talk a little bit more about it, and then we'll, we'll pr produce it for the 26th if that's what you okay. want. Definitely. What else you what, do you want to do you want us to uh, we'll come we can come back on the 26th with um, some some suggestions for the 38 38 yeah and then if you come back with your questions because Michael will be here no Michael won't be here oh Michael won't remember be remember he said he wouldn't be right here. but, but he said he would, would. He, didn't he say he'd oh he in? could by phone possibly oh yeah and I did he did he, say that was an option I did I did email him the PDF copy that. of this so he has it Yes, I saw that. You emailed it to him, which is great. I mean, he's in a place he might not review it, but he, he can he if he wants to, right? He said he would. <laughs> he can if he wants to. Maybe he's trying to make me feel good, but he did say to send no, it I to think him he if I could. He will. I think he will look at it, yes. So is there anything else that you would want for the 26th that maybe we we could work on in the meantime, or you just really want to peruse it? And if you have questions yeah, along the way, you know, as you're looking at it, if you email them to us, then we can make a you know a database of those and then be prepared to answer it for everybody on uh, you know on the next at the next meeting have you already started looking for that third I know you we just have. found out we, yesterday we sort of have but we yep. you know the administrators <laughs> you know we emailed the administrators and said hey guys any thoughts you know um, so we haven't had a chance to meet or talk about it mm. but we, and the fact that we only had one bid kind of leads um, us in that where like, we no like barter there like right for, because no, well, there's, there's not really a bartering so, it, no, the process doesn't allow anyways. for it anyway from the state bid. For that. No, but I, I, I'll be honest with you yeah um, when I first started here you had just signed the contract with, yeah. the, with the current bus company and they had really come in low um, the other bus company that was the other competitive bid was not far away from this price hmm. three years ago three years mm -hmm. ago so I I was pleasantly surprised that it was yeah. the price it was. I didn't I didn't think it their prices were we over time over those three years we saved a lot of money. Yeah. If if the price of gas has gone down so much, but the years that the, but been, but the years the price of gas recently. went up. I know, but it's gone down. They they didn't go up. Yeah, they, they couldn't go up. back up. But it might go. It is going but down. but it is interesting because the process that you have to use for the bid I mean, isn't. Other we we talked exactly. about this with Lorene, you know in this difference between public sector and private sector right I mean you have there's a there are bidding laws that you have to follow and you know <coughs> be able to say hey we don't really like your bid so could you come back with another one you know it, it is not really I possible I understand. so yeah. um, but again I, we we thought 5% was a shot but we're, we're off of that we're off of the mark PM you have to remember too I mean they're bidding for 16 you know they they have to That's give right. their they projections have projections for what they think gas is going to be next year. Right. Yeah. It's not right now. Right. Right. So yeah, you know. Well, it's a, it's the bidding <laughs> process is a very uh, you know doing all these construction projects. I've learned a lot yeah. about it, and it is and it is very interesting. Is, um, looking in good shape. We have we had any bus breakdowns this year? Not tell you. Not tell you. We have not. We have not, we have not, we have have not had any bus breakdowns. I think bus they just. I think they just. I think they broke down. they because they have the new no multiple times coming from Boston. Oh, we I don't know. We, I mean, we, it was, it was a we haven't, ago, had, I haven't heard of one bus issue. Well, we had the okay. six Maybe flags they happened, bus but we last know. year um, going, you know, going for a field trip breakdown. But that's so, not like I, a... Maybe it doesn't come to, it hasn't come to And I'm glad level. to hear that with all the storm, the snow, that we haven't had any, like, Is that, that got bus? stuck or... No, I have to say, you know, in the, and again, you know, the bus, the bus company, when we've had any kind of issues on the bus, let's say student issues or whatever, they, you know, we, we talk to them or they talk to us that we get the tapes. They have, ta you know, they have cameras right. on every bus, which that. is it's really a really nice feature. Yeah. It, it helps right. us, we, you know, really look at what we might be able to yeah. see. Um, you know, in the case of these days, so that I could get everybody in here on you know, delays, 
I said, would you please just pick up any child that is walking? Just, just I don't I care if they have the bus or not. Just pick them up. Absolutely, Carol, no problem. You know, so, you know, I haven't, you know, whenever I've asked for anything, you know, we have district safety meetings. They, the representative attends almost every yes. district safety yes, meeting. They, they do. So, you know, I, and when there were some issues with a couple of the drivers, you know, the, the, the owner came in and had a meeting with all of us in the Pembroke Library and tried to work on whatever the issues were. So, again, you know, I don't think that happens always. So, so you know, accessible. but again, you know, we want to get the best value for it. It's obviously an impact. But, and I don't know about the buses that break down. I mean, I don't think that happens very often. Um, so, can we? I mean, I, you'll, you'll be working on all the possibilities. Yeah. Um, is, is it possible to start out the contract with five buses and go to seven the mm -hmm. next year? What? It, it I mean, can I mean, happen. Just to see how everything works out. If we yeah. couldn't find the money, I mean, uh, well, there's I, no guarantee that we can, the yeah. town, you know. I initially had, <laughs> I initially had the, bud, I initially had the buses in the budget and then was thinking we should defend the custodian above level services. But as I thought about that more, I'm like, you know what? We really need the custodian. That needs to be in our budget. We, MSBA, we, we have, it's a lot of square feet, but MSBA, we, we, we entertained a, you know, a contract with MSBA that where they're paying for 50% of this project. And we said we would maintain the building. And the town is expecting that. That is a commitment we made. So we have to have the four custodians. That's just not a choice. I, and then the buses, because we can survive with five buses, we are surviving with five buses. Um, you know, if we want to defend others or have a conversation with the town around, you know, one or two more buses, then we can have that. So that's the approach we took. Was the most important thing was a custodian to get in the budget and then defend the buses on the outside. So you're right. We we may be stuck with five buses, but I think it's worth having the conversation about. And pickup will be so different next year. It will be. It it, it, sh it should be because it everybody's going to gonna be in one building. <laughs> but the but the issue is. But the issue is, what's probably going to have to happen, though, is five buses are going to come and pick up a percentage of the kids, and then five buses are coming back and picking up the rest. So no, that not, is not so educationally not sound. But it's I'm just telling right. you, it, the, the time to argue for this is now. Mm -hmm. But it, you know, if, I, if we're being told that two and a half is really a hard figure with the town, and you know, the town administrator has sort of fired the shots across the bow, that he really wants one and a half percent. Oh which would mean an additional 130 in cuts for us, in addition to the 38. Now we're getting into some very serious things. So I, 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 I believe with the buses in order to protect the integrity of this budget. Right, right. Looking at the 15 to the 16, the 130 is not impossible, in my opinion, to achieve. Oh, we, we agree with you. But it would it it's would represent it would re, it would resep, it would represent bodies. It would well, represent right. because when we go you know when we went in and we looked at every the administrators and Jonah we looked at every single line, right? And there there just there just isn't any any fat. You yeah. know we, we if you look at the bar graph or that the bar graph the circle graph, we spend like one percent of our budget on supplies. Right. I mean, it, well, that's because it, the parents are so generous. I know it's in absolutely mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. So you know, I mean, obviously, you know, again, we're trying to work with the town, but you know, maybe a two and a half percent every year isn't a sustainable budget. So you know, some years, you know, we can do it easier. Other years, you remember, uh, was it last year? We we two and a half percent was possible, but remember, the addition of special education expenses was an additional two. Mm -hmm. So we ended up with four percent, but two percent was special education costs that we put in control mm -hmm. so this year we have circuit breaker funds so that's why we're able to apply some of that money and reduce the amount you know the expenses have not decreased okay okay this will be a good read yeah you'll it's enjoy no it <laughs> you'll enjoy it in the multiple snowstorms. But we do really appreciate you taking, I know you all take a lot of time going through every line, you know, and we're happy to answer any questions that yeah. you have. No, I know. I appreciate all the I time mean, that you guys do. And the administration, I just, um, you know, I know that it's not easy for them. Mm -hmm. to, no. Like you oh, had said, there's, be, yeah. there's some very important things there that are. you want to see in there, and then you kind of just put it on the back burner, and we appreciate it. But mm -hmm. there's just, there's plenty of things we'd like to see in there, too. It's Absolutely. Just, and this being a transition year, there's a lot unknown mm -hmm. that's right 
Right, so that it's going to take us a year to the transition year. Yeah, it's going to take us a year to know what we really need. That's true. That's true, Pam. This this letter that you wrote, you know, explaining everything, um, it's just so nice, beautiful, and clear. Is there any way we could post this? Yeah, we'll we'll post the whole thing. Okay, absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Can I? uh, I would like to just change the agenda just yeah, a absolutely. little bit if we could just ask Julie um, if we could just go right to the Pembroke transition plan is that okay Julie you do that? okay Julie will be patient okay so as you know every month we come back Margaret you want to come up Margaret um, we we come before you and we chat about the transition plan and uh, as you know, we, we have a, a lot of decisions to make, and um, you know we try to engage the people who are directly affected by it in the discussion. So tonight we're gonna I, I wrote it up for you in your in your packet. So you're gonna we're gonna go through this. So the first um, thing we want to keep talking to you about is the sixth grade transition item. So there there have been a few that we've already talked about, but one in particular is the. Um, uh, trip to Camp Kiev. So as you know, the current um, sixth grade, sixth grades go to Kiev every year, and then seven, maybe you don't know, but seventh grade, uh, Kiev comes to the school and does some on-site um, programs with the kids. And then in eighth grade, the um, actual the eighth grade students go to Kiev for a three-day, you know, sort of uh, trip. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, uh, you know, that, that whole focus of uh, Kiev uh, tends to be a very nice complement to the theme at the middle school, which is respect, responsibility, and community. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a, you know, that's something that uh, in talking with Peter and uh, his, he's got input from Heidi, and we talked to Joe Patella, who was the sixth grade, who is the sixth grade team leader, um, and the the thinking is that. The, high, the middle school would continue to ha- have their relationship with Kiev uh, in seventh grade. Um, well, actually, they're going to be adding an advisory program, so they're engaging Kiev in the development of the advisory program. So the thinking would be to include as much of the Kiev language in the kind of activities that oh, get done nice. over the course of time in their, through their advisory. And um, they would continue to have the Kiev folks come to seventh grade, to, just as they've done, and then go in eighth grade to um, to Kiev. So in thinking about this being a transition, our, our intention over time is to do um, a STEM focus at the, at the Pembroke School, which is science, math, and technology. And we'd like to add the arts piece to that, sometimes they call it STEAM. STEAM. Um, like STEAM. So, so our, our, hope, our thought down the road is that, and Julie's gonna talk a little bit more about the kinds of STEM activities that we're gonna put in place this starting this summer and then for next year. But there's the matter of the current fifth grade kids and what happens to them regarding the Kiev trip. So in thinking about this and talking to different different people in different groups, and we had a coffee with um, some parents and there, this was a, an item that was discussed. So um, we think because the fact, because this particular group of fifth graders, if they were going to the middle school next year, they would go to Kiev. So our plan is to have this fifth group of fifth grade go to Kiev in the fall. This will be the last Kiev trip for sixth grade in our plan. Um, but that particular group, for many, for many reasons, makes sense that that group gets to go to Kiev. Um, they've looked forward to it. If they were going to the middle school, they would have it. So we're going to have them go to Kiev. Joe thinks that that's a, a very good plan. And that's like the like after Thanksgiving again. Yeah, November. November. And so they they've hold, they held the date anyway. So we we're we're going to be good on that. So they'll having this decision made, they'll start talking to the parents. So unfortunately, one of the downsides to Kiev that I've seen in the past is we don't start talking to the parents about it till October, and they got to go in November. So then they got to raise all this money. So if we have this decision made, we'll start talking to the parents now. The parents can have plenty of time to to know that that's the plan. Um, and um, so that would be that's that's going to be our recommendation. And then, like I said, it also gives us the the year 
to transition to the new Pembroke because there's going to be plenty of new things to do in this fall that we don't really need to entertain a new trip on top of every other new thing we're doing. So we think it gives everybody time to have, you know, let us get into our STEM stuff, mm -hmm. have a year to plan it, figure out what location we want to go to. And actually, Joe Patella has had experience at uh, Nature's Classroom as well. In fact, he told me the history because he's been here a while. They used to do Nature's Classroom here for years. And then they, they decided that they wanted to go more with the leadership, you know, the leadership thing. So they, they transitioned. And um, so in talking with Joe, I mean, we're also trying to make sure our science curriculum is inquiry driven and we have some work to do once these new science standards come out. So we're feeling like this STEM, this STEM focus will, in the, in going to an environmental camp where there is both an academic science, academic focus, as well as a team building, self-esteem building, trust building, all of the things that people talk about with Kiev, you know, well, it won't be done exactly the same way. It's still, you know, I'm the, glad the, to the, hear it and read that they have that there too. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, so, I but we would, that. we would look at, you know, the different varieties. We parents would have an opportunity to learn more about it, Are and those, we've already got a couple. Still, like in a way, yeah, it's a still in away. a way trip because that. In thinking about it from the point of view of what I heard at the coffee, I think Marg and I heard at the coffee, is well, there were definitely people who were strong Kiev you know, proponents because they've had experience or they've heard about it and they really wanted to have their child have an advantage to go there. There were also people who had been to Nature's Classroom and had been saying, you know what, so at the end of the day it sounds to me like the thing I heard clearly is they want a trip. <laughs> they want a good trip for the kids that they have a great time, that they go off site, that they have a chance to be together. So we feel like this represents a compromise um, and still, you know, keeps the district's association with Kiev as part of the respect, responsibility, and community theme. We do responsive classroom and other things at the element community service by grades. We feel like there's a lot of other opportunities. Student council, anybody who wants to be on the student council can be on the student council. We've had school store in the past. So we feel like there are opportunities for elementary students to have that focus on you know leadership and, and I'd also like to look into the peer men, the peer mediation, mediation. yeah we're interested in that as well so that's another aspect that right so we're great. trying to build the same skills we're and we're just trying to figure out how you know how do we how do we have that transition so specifically in, in thinking about the fifth grade kids this okay, year so let me just ask you a question sure you're saying that this fifth grade class yeah. will be the last class to go to Kiev next fall this, as, this coming fall, yes. yeah. Okay, as sixth graders. As sixth graders. So in the middle school, we will still have, on a go-forward basis, Cam Kiev come to Correct. seventh grade. Nothing will change at the middle school. And then the eighth grade will still have that for Correct. Eight. Okay, Correct. so that still, Correct. okay. Correct. Okay. So again, after listening to everybody and mm -hmm. thinking about, well, you know, transitions and, you know, what seems, you know, to be... A way that you know we can everybody can have an interest in the students get a because as we as we know whether you go to Kiev or whether you go to Nature's Classroom the kids are going to have a wonderful opportunity mm -hmm. it's a great opportunity you know I'm I've been familiar with both I don't think one is better than the other it's not really a value judgment it's tying more into what we want to be doing with curriculum um, as well and still supporting the idea of you know leadership and good decision making and Mm -hmm. And and that I mean, that's that, really that needed at the middle school. That's right. really that needed at the middle, middle school. school. That's a tough level, developmental level. That's they right. really need those social emotional skills right. and foundation. And you know, I'm glad that they all have a wonderful time there. But I've always said that the Kiev is it's not meant as a as a reward vacation. It's they're they're there to learn oh, something. Yeah. And you know, they have the the three curriculums there: the social emotional, the all ways, anti bullying, the forty developmental assets, and the life skills. It's kind of all woven together in Kiev's own customized yes absolutely um, you know, curriculum which I'm, I'm happy to hear that we be continuing at the at the middle school because mm -hmm. I think that age group really needs that badly um, but and I'm you know do, do we know when the new science standards are going to come out I think the old ones are 1999 right, right. right. I have jokes usually. before the people who came they were supposed they not to be, be adopted us. in December but um, they're still in a little bit of a state of flux <laughs> But that happens. Okay. But they're coming out soon. They're coming out. They're coming we out have the drafts. So I mean, they were supposed the to be in December. That means that they're, 
yeah, coming out. We've been out working soon. out the draft for about a year now, so <coughs> while they finalize, we just kind of. And you have an idea of what they're oh, yeah. going to be about. <coughs> Would you say that there's a, a, um, a correlation, a consistency with the nature's classroom curriculum with what we're going to need to I would, be teaching? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Certainly, I saw that a lot of STEM, especially um, our two major, two major areas we can look at. For sure, the state is really, really big on inquiry and creativity, and you know, hands-on learning. And and uh, actually, uh, the STEM is something that you're going to see coming out statewide. That there's more and more innovation oh, grants. Like Julie got a nice innovation grant to to work with yeah. the the business program at the middle high school. So the, the you know they're not funding full day kindergarten, but they're funding innovative innovation now. That's sort of the new, the new thing, the hands on you know, thinking for the future, critical thinking skills, problem solving, which both Kiev and Nature's Classroom have embedded in their programs. Excellent. So the it's a, it's a skill set that you know both both promote. Mm -hmm. But you know, hopefully, people will be comfortable with that. We do feel like that's the right and best thing for the the current fifth grade to have that opportunity to go to Kiev, and then give us the time to sort of put in place a new model and really, you know, let the parents know how it's going to work. You know, be be let the committee know, you know, what the options are, how does Nature's Classroom work, and it will also allow sufficient time for fundraising because, like with any trip, it's it's on the backs of the parents you know and and I know when I've had kids go to nature's classroom when I was a principal you know the kids might have sold candy bars not I know wellness policy and all that but this is what the in the old days before wellness policies this is how it worked you got you got a box of candy and you sold it and fifteen dollars of that went to the company and fifteen dollars went to your little account so if you were an aggressive kid whose parents said get out there in front of stop and shop and sell these candy bars you really didn't have the parents didn't have to, you know, foot as much of right. the bill. So, again, we just need time. We've they're already after the coffee. There, there was one parent who went and researched Nature's Classroom. I feel like I know all that I need to know about Nature's Classroom right now. But I don't think we're ready to go there yet. I think we need the time to sufficiently do it. So I think that this is the best policy. In the fifth sense. grade class, I would assume, is doing the their the um, play fundraising. Well, the fundraising oh. throughout the year, and that's always. Um, gone into the next year towards Camp Kiev. Correct. The, the There's fund, usually the a portion of the money that goes Which toward Kiev. Oh, it helps it's a lot to subsidize that. Scholarships for people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I think I think it I think it was sort of taken off the top. So if this was right. the total amount of money, but Peter has raised, has done dances, and Margaret's intention is to you know have sixth graders be able to have dances, and you know if there's a dance associated with you know here's the money for subsidies for Camp Kiev, then that will make that very clear to parents mm -hmm. in advance. Well, the fifth grade just had a dance for Cedardale that was a huge success. It was yeah, my people were on the door. That was first huge. dance. I, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> you leave in the morning and you come back at night and you have a disco. <laughs> yeah. I know. You gotta oh, thank Scott and you gotta thank Scott Jones because he Scott, oh, Scott, so doing it. Scott did it Scott and he Jones, just gets a, those bubbles going and the fog and the lights oh, and it was, it's just awesome. and he donates his time. So yeah, he's an is, amazing. It is. Mm -hmm. Those dances have always been very successful. Yeah, yes. I hate to yeah. see mm -hmm. the dances go away because the kids really have so much fun and it's not do, at right. that age. It's not that I mean maybe there is the boy girl aspect, but it's all the girls are all that was no, I know, but then the older kids do the older ones still. But, but they, they um, they she just don't have Well, so they much danced fun, the last. You know, when it's, I've yeah. chaperoned a lot of sixth grade dances. They danced the last half hour. They, the boys <laughs> are on one side and the girls are on the other for the remainder of the time. Just saying, it's 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 different. It's funny, you know. It's a funny thing. But we will yeah, continue so. to to work with you know those kind of opportunities as That's long like, as they're okay. developmentally appropriate. Of course. Um, okay. Of course. So <laughs> enough about Kiev right now. So let's go to the core academic subject okay. schedule. Okay. So we've been working on this, um, and as we said, we're, there are five sixth grade classrooms. Currently at the middle school, there are four academic subjects, plus they have an enrichment and enhancement block. But at the new school, we have five sections, right? So we, we are planning to have content-specific focus um, the teachers uh, it'll be interesting because there are a couple of teachers who are coming over one has an elementary certification which means all subjects can be taught the other has a specific uh, 
content certification. So that's consistent with the state. If you're going to teach, you know, one area, you know, mm -hmm. all the time, then, you know, having a content certification, if you're, especially if you're in a middle school, is, is required, okay? Mm -hmm. Because it's an elementary school, and I think that's, I think that's what we have to make sure people understand, is we aren't running the sixth grade as a middle school right, grade elementary. anymore. It's an element, so these, they're not middle school students now, they're elementary students. So in order to have the transition, in order to, you know, work with kids that we think are in a developmental way, and, you know, obviously we're, we're you know, we're still going to do everything we can to make sure that they have content-specific instruction in math, reading, English language arts, sorry, um, science and social studies. In language arts, again, we're all about transition. So currently, ch children have 90 minutes of English language arts in their, in, built into their day. And that makes sense because they're reading, most of them are learning to read, but many are reading to learn. Right? They already know how to read, they're learning how to access information. So the intention here would be that the kids would have two language arts blocks. So they they might they will have two different teachers but the way we'll set it up and again we want the teachers to be involved in this discussion but so we'll do the standards based somebody will do the standards based ELA which is integrating reading and writing you know using the literature novels and things that they're using now the curriculum from the sixth grade will travel to to the Pembroke so it's not a completely new curriculum okay uh, with the exception of math might be math is different but the rest of the like if you're the science teacher you're teaching the sixth grade district science curriculum whether you're based at the middle school or whether you're based at Pembroke um, so in English language arts the way we're thinking about s splitting it now is because in 45 minutes so they'll do the what they do at the middle school now for their they have vocabulary program the, their their novels that they read but then the other period, they'll go to the English language arts teacher who will probably be doing more small group reading, be doing some literature circles, reading extensions, um, connections to writing, you know, reading and writing kind of connections to give very much more specific instruction in some aspects of language arts. So they'll, they'll be getting a double dose of language arts, which they currently do not get at the middle school. Okay, so that's how we're gonna, that's how we're gonna deal with, uh, with that. Now, um, is that tied into the MCAS? It's tied into the standards. Yeah, but, um, you know, in, with our MCAS, the writing portion of it, like the long essay. Right. It, it, will, it will build stamina uh, for that writing. I mean, that's one thing we see, you know, that we really have to develop that ability for children to write and have that stamina to right. sustain them through something like a standard, standardized test. Right. So it will in, but and write, to know how to break up the writing instead that's right. of just that's right writing, right. knowing when to end a paragraph, right. begin a new one, exactly. and right. You can have right. much more specific. You have right. more time now to have much more specific because in forty-five minutes, if you're trying to do your reading and your writing, and your vocabulary and all yeah, those it's, things, it's, it's not a lot of time. Right. Right. So this will difficult. give us the op and again, that's what kids are getting through grade five. So it yeah. makes sense to have that same opportunity, although if we're doing the subject-specific teaching, we can't, we don't have the beauty like we have now of two and a half hours of one teacher teaching language arts. So, we, so you know, that's our intention. And then when kids get to seventh grade, then they're in the, then they're in the subject area classes yeah. anyway. Right. And they, they won't have a double block in seventh grade, but no, they may I not need the idea, a double block in seventh grade. I love the idea grade. of the double block. And years ago, again, learning the history of all this, years ago, they actually, when during John, one time when John Fauché was here, they did have a second reading block. They had, they had two reading blocks. And uh, so, you know, it'll, it'll help in a lot of ways. It'll help, with, you, know, the, you know, our language language arts scores, but it also will help with that transition so we make sure enough kids get enough reading and writing because that is literacy and numeracy, right. you know, are the, are the uh, function of what we need. Um, so there will be a homeroom period at the beginning and ending of every day. So we do want to continue with a responsive classroom and, and some sort of advisory, but sometimes you can work your advisory into responsive classroom. Um, and at the end of the day, the students will go back to their homeroom so that they kind of close their day, make sure homework is all where it needs to be, you know. Um, it's, How long you know, is that in the morning and the afternoon? Well, we're still working on the time blocks, but we're thinking 20 minutes each at the most. Yeah. No more than that, because yeah. again, when you're looking at classes, you know, the content, math, science, social studies would need to be at least 45 to 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to have a nice chunk of time. It's like the backward design. You have 
kind of work your way back from there. Mm -hmm. So just, again, a place so that children feel like they've made a connection with a particular teacher. And then at the end of the day, to, again, the, you know, to make sure agenda books are filled out, children are going home knowing they've, you know, got everything with them and they're not rushing out. So at the, at the end of the day when they go back, mm -hmm. does that teacher have listed on the board the children's homework assignment? Right, that's what I was wondering. No. No, no because you're going to get that in every grade, right. in every class. Yes. Okay, but my understanding is but now they do that. Would she be they aware? They go back at the middle school aware? and they have it. Peter, do you know about that? Do they have an end? Do they, they, they go back at the end of the day to a particular Sixth teacher? Grade. Sixth grade does. And okay. it would list at that class what their homework is, which I think is is a, a great thing yeah. because then the kids can actually open their agenda book because you know how classes are at the end yeah that's usually when the teachers are assigned the homework yeah. the bell yeah. rings and see you later well that would be so something the back. sixth grade teachers would would decide you know yeah. so i think that i mean we, we don't want to micro the sixth grade is out five minutes early too oh you do yeah that's right yeah the whole year but you won't have to worry about that now right because they're not going to be, be in the middle the school. They'll be the oldest, They'll be the oldest kids in the class, the not the youngest. In the race so the, the purpose, so you do that so they get out? They get a head okay. start. It takes them a little longer to vacate. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, okay. they're learning the ropes. We're going to know the ropes in sixth grade. So I think, um, I think the, the purpose of it, it, again, the sixth grade teachers, if that's what has worked for them and that's what they want to continue, I don't think well, we have and, an and objection to it. Exactly, but the other, you know, the other um, issue is that teachers will be probably using more technology. So you know, they will be more it's, of yeah, those assignments and being able to utilize the technology. Mm -hmm. Right, because the the um, fifth and sixth grade kids are going to have a one to one. They're going to be working with with laptops that'll be assigned to them. Okay, so so you have this, so that we have the, the the block. Then, as we talked about before, we'll have a specialist block, and that's where K through five will will every day will rotate through the specials, and then the sixth grade will have the band or chorus opportunity, and then I think Margaret calls it wind time. What I need, but it's an intervention period um, that will be built in during the day, so that um, students who need extra help will get extra help and. You know, others may get enrichment, or others may work on things in their, you know, in their in their classroom, whatever. You know, the, so that's, that's like the, the enhancement. That's the beauty of a that's team is that you, in an elementary school, is you have flexibility. Right. You're not dependent on oh, I only have this time because the high school schedule, you know, says that I it's going to ring the bell's going to ring. You have more flexibility in an elementary setting, so they might decide we're going to have something special at once a month on a Friday afternoon and then they'll adjust their schedule and it's not going to affect anybody else but them so that's a good thing to have more opportunity mm -hmm. so that's that's how we're seeing the the schedule and as I, as we talked about you know Margaret will be it can be chatting with the teachers on and she'll put the specialist schedule together with input from the specialists and you know once we make the big decisions then the people that are affected by the decisions and have expertise in certain things can Okay, tell involved. me about the bell. What bell? Tell me. Oh, um, we won't have a bell. Tell me how they're going to know they go into class to class. Because the teachers are going to know that the class is over. <laughs> okay, is that what it is? So that's yeah. what it was. It's going to be. They're just going to say, "Okay, class is over." That's what I would envision. <laughs> There'll be no bells. Because again, we want no bells. Right. Okay. Ten o'clock. It's time because to go to someplace fifth, else. Because remember, the the rest of the school isn't going to be operating Correct. in that model. <laughs> Correct. So I again would not envision that we would have bells. Well, I know we talked about. We did talk about like a signal. We did talk about at one point a signal. I, I don't. I don't really think care, we're thinking about just, a signal. I'm not saying point. I prefer a bell. I mean, because, because I think again, bells we're. Are lying, actually. You have to envision. You know, five classrooms, yes. five teachers. So they're they're right there. So you open your door, ready to go. <laughs> I mean, you know, so it's not it's they're not, not like halfway high across school. the school. They're right. They're and literally exactly. the, if a teacher wanted exactly. to, they could probably design their own little you know iPad. Yeah, no, I'm sure they yeah. could. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, sure I'm they not could. worried. They it to. is because again, you know, they're they're right there. So it's just yeah. okay. Off you go. Right. As I said, but that's how they are at the middle school too. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, those so. class, you know, when the kids go up to the middle school and they're all nervous about, oh, I'm <laughs> gonna, reality, I have three right. minutes, it's like you walk out the door, you take a left, and your classroom is there. <laughs> you know, like when I went but to school, we the, had to run upstairs, we had to go through a resource center to get, you know, fine. I mean, yeah. 
right. the kids have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> so this is not. They're a not going to have the same right. fears. Yeah. Because no, they're going to stay in the school so they when know. They go to so it's really grade, just a matter of going to the other side of the hall. Right. I know. That's really what it is. Even though I still get nervous at parent night. I'm always like to the kids, okay, so where is this? And yeah, but like, that's a bigger <laughs> environment. I think you're going right, to find yeah. this a little easier to navigate. Right. right. Um, okay. And and uh, I didn't add it here, but <laughs> one of the one of the uh, things that we're continuing to talk about, it reminded my, me today, Margaret, that we we need to put on our list to talk again with the fifth grade teachers. Yes. Yeah, because yes. we have to follow back with them. We we're talking about, you know, did they want to do some kind of switching, but not obviously at this this to, to this degree so they they were chatting with us about that so we have to circle back and talk more with them again like they did in the past uh, not at, not to the same extent of what they did in the past but it was well, some I think it was just one class it might be some it yeah like some teachers have done studies. it yeah, yeah exactly so we, we have to look at that and try to figure out how that'll go um okay so then talking about activities so some folks have been wondering about uh, some of the current fifth grade like fun activities like Cedardale for example um, and then you know I think our our uh, discussions have um, have basically yielded again that this fifth grade class that we're talking about will go to Cedardale um, I think Margaret wants a little more opportunity to talk about you know how that looks in the future like if, does it become a sixth grade trip then is Cedardale even something we want to do, especially some of these things that we're talking about with STEM? Is there something we want to replace it with? You know, we just don't have all of that information yet. So we can't answer that, but what we can say is next year, this current fifth grade is going to go to, is going to, go to Cedardale. And this fifth grade. grade class will, you know, will have, uh, the play is another question people have asked about. Um, I think that the thinking is to transition the play to sixth grade in the future. So is this fifth grade class going to Cedardale? Yes. Yes. This year? Yes. This okay. fifth grade now in three months will be going to Cedardale. Okay. Yes. There was some question about whether or not that was still going to happen. Okay. It, it will still happen. Yeah. Um, that, that was always. That Red was always Sox Day will still happen. You know, um, the I think that Margaret's working with the different teachers, different grade levels. You know, as to you know, are we going to continue to do? Famous Americans or invention convention and all of that kind of stuff, but that input that's input that's coming from the teachers as to where, what what their plan is um, for this year. Um, Red Sox Day, I believe, is going to happen this year if we ever don't have snow everywhere. Um, but um, that that's just something that you know. Again, there, there's people that need to be involved in those discussions, but the most immediate concerns are for the current fifth grade, and so there, sh there shouldn't be any concerns, whatever they've been used to doing, but the plan is to, to do it. Um, okay, so let's see, what else do we have here, Margaret? Um, oh, and then there was a question about the play. So I think that the thinking is that the play will become a sixth grade play, but then there's gonna be a little gap, so the the, the, the fifth grade students are doing the fifth grade play. So then the plan would be that next year, these students, these would same do students, a musical type performance, would have a, like a musical performance. Get ready okay. for that, Tyler. Instead of a play. <laughs> and then instead and then of the play, and then the following, following year, sixth grade would do the play. Right. So the kids are in fourth grade. Okay. So. Everyone, yeah, so nobody fifth misses grade's it. doing a play nobody this misses year. It. Just no one transitions misses a play. it. Exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah. What I see, what I see is going on here, and I appreciate it, is these fifth grade kids that, like our, like my, all my fifth grade kids had all that special experience because this was their last year, and I'm glad that right. you're still doing that because I think it's important yeah, that these kids. Important. Right. Because they are special. They're the last class they in are. that old building. That's right. So, yeah. that's right. you know, I, I appreciate that you're doing that. That, you know, they're still going to feel right. like it, they're right. a special group. It's right. fifth and grade they and move you know. into the special sixth grade. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, no, I think it's great. So, the fifth grade this year will do a play. Next year, they will do like a musical. A musical. I, right. And then. Not a musical play, but like yeah. a, but maybe like a performance. Yeah, like a variety yeah. show or something, right. you know? Yeah. 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 Right. Something Not fun. like Greece or anything. No, which no, it would no, be no, like no, a musical no, play. No, yeah. and then, but then, so the fourth graders this year, 
we'll, we'll do, do a play. play. Okay. So when they're the sixth grade. So, you know, just everyone will do the play. Just I mean, We all chuckle, but these decisions no, are I not know. easy. I know. Right? I mean, they I take time, and there's a zillion the, of them. The so that's why we want to make sure, you know. This that, is what Pembroke is all about, though. It's like when you yes. go in, this is what all of our kids have been hearing that's about. Right. Like right. when exactly. I get to Pembroke, when I get, you know, yes. in third grade, yes. they do something special. I forget what it is. Record. What? The recorder. I will tell the you. The recorder. Oh. oh, yes, yes. I remember well, that's the recorder. Special. I was the like children, this right? all the time. <laughs> Every day, I'm like, put the recorder away. <laughs> but it's special to the children. Especially okay. when they get belts for it or something, right? They get all these different colored yes. belts. Yeah. No, they had a lot of fun but, with but that. It is important that we keep all this. But I mean, okay, for the past right. four years or three years or whatever, they've you know seen themselves as moving toward the fifth grade. Right. And right. the fifth grade was going to be a really... Special Monumental year. year. Right. And, and they are kind of moving on. I mean, they really yeah. are. Right. Like everybody at Pembroke. Right. But still, yeah. they're moving on. So it's great to give them the sense that, yes, that's. Well, still it would be happening. hard to, again, you know, in their lives, Everybody's last year, looking forward to this year, mm -hmm. it right. would be hard to all of a sudden say, oh, you're not going to, you're going to do it, but you're not doing it this year. That That's a yeah. long time exactly. for a yeah, child. A long time. They, they wouldn't have known, okay, I just have to wait two years. So, right. and many things were, you know, already in the works. So, again, it makes sense to let's just do it. It is their last year. It's the last year at Pembroke. Then moving on, sixth grade, you know, there will be special things about sixth grade. Right. And then mm -hmm. going forward, that sixth grade will be the last year. So you just, your special year is sixth grade and not fifth grade. Right. right. Meanwhile, the curriculum will continue. So, you know, the, the, the enriching... Um, activities within the curriculum will still happen. Those may evolve again depending on you know curriculum decisions and maybe instead of something now we have a big something else related to the curriculum. So those you know we just have to we just don't different. always know you know what's, what what teachers are going to want to do what children are interested in so. Right so um, in thinking so we're doing these updates for you and then we're maybe Pam I'll talk to you about figuring out ways we can post some of these things from the notes on our Facebook page so sure. people you know people know what we're talking about sure. um, but there's also we're or Margaret on the and, website or on the website or website Pembroke yep yeah. we, we um, Margaret and I are planning okay where is it are planning to have a parent information night for oh, the yeah, fifth May, grade parents May, May, 6th. May, 6th. On May 6th Oh, okay from 630 to 8 which we'll publicize and because at that point we feel like we we pretty much will have all the decisions really made so we'll know like okay this this is how it's all going to work and we just you know parents just hopefully will help will have trust that we're continuing and if there are specific questions that parents have about what about this or what about this if they just drop us an email then it, you know Margaret and I meet every Friday we hold most of the afternoon we meet on Friday on this topic but sometimes we'll invite Julie if it's curriculum sometimes we'll invite Joan if it's budget sometimes we'll invite Donna if it's special ed sometimes we'll talk to Peter because you know it affects his building and we're talking transition but we, we, we're systematically moving through all of the decisions that we believe have to be made. But if there are things that parents or teachers or anyone else has in, wants information about, it would be great if they just drop us an email and then we'll add it to our list of things to talk about. And does your school council help too? Like, is this well, the school, open the discussion? Well, the school council, um, they sometimes will bring up topics, again, you know, that they may hear. Mm -hmm. But these, we're actually working on the handbook because that is another big project. You know, we're taking oh, yes. three handbooks mm -hmm. and combining right. it to one. And, you know, when we're really looking through the handbooks, much of it is, well, not much, um, some of the material, it's outdated. Um, it, it just doesn't belong. It's changed. So we're really going through. We started actually with discipline and spent a couple meetings really looking at how we want that to look. Um, just kind of cleaning up, you know, taking appendix out of the body of the handbook, you know, making that, you know, an appendix in the back. Have an index, uh, a <laughs> table of contents. <laughs> right, but even the table of contents, um, <laughs> the way it is now. I love table of contents. I know. Right, <laughs> and, the, and the way it is now, it's because things have been added and shifted, there's really no rhyme or reason. You know, if you want to look right. for something, you're... It doesn't necessarily <laughs> Well, that's why you made a table of contents, either. especially if it's exactly. going to be posted on the website, and then, you right. know, it's really yeah, So it, it really, this is our work, and then... Um, Next month we will start again. Be, do you remember um, 
Did we mention it here about the MCAS? We didn't mention it. Okay. Here. All right. <laughs> MCAS may be released a little bit later next year because some school districts are using PARC. Right. So just so they can coordinate, it, they, it may not be ready. So they may push it out a little bit. So therefore, I'm hoping, thinking, that it might give me a couple extra weeks in the fall so that now now would be the time we would normally have the parent survey mm -hmm. because we want that information to put into the SIP. You know, that goes into writing some of the goals. So our next meeting, we would like to start crafting the parent survey. So this is a little bit late, but again, knowing we don't really need that information for a little bit of time, you know, it's been fine. So we're working on the handbook, then we'll work on the parent survey, and then, um, right. you know, finish up the handbook. So this parent, this parent meeting would really you know be able to you know give parents all of the information that we're you know that we're intending them to, to they feel we feel they need to know and then if we have input as to what they need to know then we can incorporate that um, and then just uh, on on the topic of Pembroke and then I'm just going to quickly do a couple brief things on Pearly um, you know we're continuing discussions are on the actual moving plan right so you know, we, we know we're, Joan's getting a, a bid out to, um, for moving companies, and then we know we need to talk to the teachers about, you know, what can be packed and where and in what way. So we're continuing to work on that as we have more information. Um, the pickup and drop off procedures are a big discussion. In fact, we're working with the district safety committee on that, which includes the chief of police, the fire chief, oh, good. highway superintendent, so highway surveyor, bus. Margaret, bus company, and um, you know that that discussion is is ongoing. So those are things that we are continuing to discuss. Mm. And then, in terms of just quickly in Pearly, um, that you know we've decided that Amanda Harding, who is a current preschool teacher, is going to be. The preschool director and we talked to you before about as you know Amanda's been out on maternity leave but she's been doing some work for us um, during that time so she's going to return in September but when we talked about the hybrid class where we were going to have the two teachers yeah. the reason for that is that there's a portion of the day when Amanda could then be freed up to do the, the work of the director and of course Camille early I told you was staying there so Camille would be working uh, side by side with her um, and then um, she would also receive a small stipend because she'd, there'd be work, quite a bit of work outside of the school day as well. She will report to Margaret. So, so Margaret, as the elementary principal, will still be attached to the preschool. Sure. But she won't do the day, the reason why I'm in a director is she won't do the day-to-day -day operation of the preschool. So that, you know, that is important. because yeah, That was like back when like Janet Arndt was head yeah, of the maybe, school maybe and something like that. Yeah. there was a principal at that time and that worked out great. Yeah, so I think that you know that that should make the preschool people feel comfortable yeah. and there's a point of contact and so we feel like we're setting that up for failure. Amanda is very interested in administration is you know taking <laughs> for success. success. <laughs> yeah, <and> not <laughs> failure. <laughs> Set up for success. Um, Do you know you that, said failure? I meant success. <laughs> there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot here. There's Thank lot. you. Success. Well, success is what we want. So Thank she you. is also interested in administration, and she wants to, you know, get certified as supervisor director, and she's willing to do that with two small boys at home because this is something, a direction she wants to move yeah, in. So we're happy about that. Maybe she'll bring kids to the preschool. And then, of course, we'd be adding the extra care. preschool, right. and, right. you know, we'd be, um, we'd be working with um, all of the programs there. Um, so the, the library, uh, Georgie Fazio, is going to be moving over to Pembroke. So there'll be two librarians at in the media center and working there but we still want to provide support and library for the um, preschool. preschool and Georgie does that right now so what we're what we're going to be doing is um, Georgie we don't know what the schedule is but maybe two mornings a week she will start her day or end her day we don't quite know what will happen start or end her day at Pearlie and she'll do what she does now she'll read to the kids she'll help them pick out books and we will um, keep a preschool library um, in the you know not not where it is right now but in the room that's beside where the mm -hmm. little well is the reading room the reading room we'll 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 because Julie's gonna we're gonna use those rooms for for different professional they're like the stages 
Where, yes. yes. Is, yeah, the is that the stage? Well, it's, it's, yeah, the yeah. Where they do the pictures. They take pictures. Yes. Okay. See. Okay. Yeah. So oh, and then we'll one. create. We'll create. You know, some nice stacks okay. of yeah. books around the side, and then the kids can go up and they can go to the library. And right. as I said, Georgie can can work with them. And we did talk to Georgie about that. She's she was very happy. I was going to say because I know she was, she was very happy. She was nervous very about happy. leaving. Yes. Early. She's, she was yeah. very happy. Yeah. Um, and then let's see. Oh, this is back on the Pembroke. So. So one of the things, you know, you have to think of every little detail. So one of the things is how do you determine who gets what room, what teachers are in what room? You know, I mean, there's a lot of ways to do that. Do you do it by seniority? Well, then that's not fair to the young teachers, right? Do you do it by, uh, well, what end of the room do you, you want to look at this woods or this woods? I mean, you know, who do you want to work with? I mean, there's all kinds of, like, nuances of it. So after looking at lots of different uh, thoughts on this, we decided we're just going to do a lottery. Mm -hmm. So on um, May 11, March 11, uh, the teachers will, at their professional gathering in the morning, you know, we'll do the, here are all the numbered rooms, here's the receptacle, you know, pick, pick, your, name, pick your number out, and this is your room. And then we want to do that. We, we are trying to get the, an opportunity for the teachers to go into the school before it's fully done. But I don't want that to happen until the floors are in. So they're working on the floor. So they did say that, to, to me, late March is probably, you know, fairly possible. So if we do the lottery on the 11th, then when they have a chance to go visit the school, they'll at least be able to say, oh, this is my room. They can bond. They can bond, bond with their room. Their room. Um, they so must be dying to get in there. They are. They are. And, you know, but you don't want... I, I know. I, I keep telling people, you know what? I want you to go into that school and go, wow, I can't wait to get here. It's a construction zone. Correct. It's not, I agree. You know, you don't, you don't want, want to burst their bubbles. Say, like, right. What's going to go in now? It's oh not, my I mean, God, it's where's my thing? But, where's my wall going to go? Yeah. No, you, yeah. you don't want that. You I want them to walk in and say, oh, I see I'll put my rug here, I'll put right. my desks here. It, 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 trust me when I tell you, it, it really will be better when they can go in and then go, wow, I can't wait to get here. So, yeah. but the lottery is something we're going to do on March 11th, and we feel like that's the right. fairest way, uh, way to do it. When are you going to do a like for the for families to go in? Well, I think summer? that that's something we're talking about. With I mean, I we have to wait till it's substantially yeah. complete, and we know when we take it over. And but yeah, I wouldn't. And then of course we we have to make sure that the furniture comes in and gets set up, and then the technology gets installed, which is which is going to happen in the summer. Mm -hmm. So you know. Certainly, as 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 soon as we have the go ahead and the okay, you know that everything is where it needs to be. Then yeah, we'll set up we'll set up tours and yeah, we absolutely know that people are anxious about it and excited to see it, and they are gonna really be very impressed when they get the opportunity to go. I can tell you, Margaret and I go probably every two or three weeks, or you know. I know we asked for another tour. Yeah, the building building committee asked for another tour too, and, and they suggested that they do it in March because they okay. said, right. because they said, you know, all the Wait. snow and you know they're they're, they're putting in the trazo floor, they're putting in all the floors now are back on schedule. They're putting the floors in, so that's what that was their suggestion to the building committee to 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 go in March. I don't know if you want to go with them. We could certainly coordinate sure. that. We yeah. could certainly yeah. coordinate yes. that visit. Um, but yeah, just, just a thought was for parent information night in the fall. Yes, you might want to invite the citizens of the town and have all those people who aren't parents go to one place and have one tour guide. Just an idea I just had, because I think I mean a lot we of we wouldn't use the, the tent. Yeah. yeah, we'd I mean, have to have. I think we'd have a separate, a separate time night. for them. Well, and yeah. a separate I, I, time. I'm, I'm okay. certain the building committee is planning I think planning the building committee is a, planning a now. community open house. Right. That's great. Okay. Yeah. So, it's yeah. sort of their venue I, because it, sure. you know. They yeah. probably are. They, it hasn't come up in a meeting. They've worked recall, long and hard but for I'm that. Sure. Right. Okay. A separate I, I community think, open house would be better. Well, I don't, I mean, that makes I don't sense even know me. if it's just, just an opportunity for anyone mm -hmm. to tour, you know, because again, right. it's, it belongs to the town. It belongs to the town. Yeah, exactly. So Michael raised something that I thought was interesting is, you know, he's got a preschooler. So we were chatting about it because he came to preschool night and he said, I don't think I'm going to be able to take advantage of it because I need something beyond the school day. I couldn't sign up my daughter up if I couldn't have an after school program. So we had at the time when we talked about this, we had said, well, we're definitely going to have a before school program. But we were trying to see whether whether people wanted an after school program. That's a long day for for little preschoolers. Um, but after Margaret had her information night, there were well, a number that, of that night that I, night I several people that asked night. her. 
So yeah. we're, we're saying now we're going to offer. So when she goes to her um, lottery night, she's going to announce that there will be an after school program to 430, thinking that that might be something that a, a parent might hesitate to sign up if they didn't know that mm. that was something that they could plan on and count on. So did you think, tell Michael that? Uh, well, I haven't yet. Wow. Because yeah, you know, be I haven't chatted with him about it. But um, it made us think that, and then when Margaret heard from like six other people, six people we're like, that okay, evening well, said, then, are you uh, going to have it? I said, there's the interest, so we'll have it. Well, look at our yeah, after school programs. We, I mean, our after school <laughs> programs have been growing and solid for, so there's a need. There's a need right. in the community mm -hmm. for it. So, so, and really, that's all it was. It, not that, you know, we didn't want to, but you can't offer something if you think, oh, only two children. It just, we wouldn't be able you to can't run afford it. it. But mm -hmm. when six came up that evening and said, Oh, I'd be interested. Well, then there you go. I mean, yeah, that does Should show. A lot of people. So, um, again, on our list is to discuss extended day in both buildings. Yeah, that's coming up on the next. But the night of the the afternoon of the pre-K lottery, I will have a sign up. So, regardless if we know who, you know, again how it will work, there's a parent's name and number, and they'll know that there will be a program, and they'll be contacted, and we'll get that information. So, you know, I'll put a sign up. Okay, so that's it for this time. Well, next time we'll have more to report. Okay. We'll try to get some thank information you. out. Um, oh, that's a lot. We do have two parents here that I'm. Thank you for coming and staying. Yes. Did yeah. you did you Just have it. like any? Just question? I wanted to thank you first of all for keeping Kia for the sixth grade. I think that's really important. A lot of us really um, we're looking forward to with the kids. we really looking. So I appreciate you guys okay. keeping that. You're welcome. I mean, um, we clearly. Heard at the you know heard at the copy that there was that was interest it was interest in that so yeah um, my other thought was with the sixth grade going in to the new school and the the, the old school coming down mm -hmm. right now there's no place for the kids to go outside and have recess when there's no snow on the ground per se that yeah. um, they play on the cement now and a lot of them get hurt and scraped what are we going to do with the um, when they go into the new school. Where are they going to play? The playgrounds will be open. They will be open. The pr playgrounds will be open. In fact, the playgrounds right now are all installed, but the the, the surface, the, the ground <laughs> surface, it cannot be installed till it gets warmer. Oh. So that that'll all that'll all be done before they consider the building substantially complete. And there's some pictures of the play structures on up on Facebook. They are oh, snow neat. covered, oh. so it's a little hard, you know. But they are there. Those are the new ones. Right. Um, Oh, that's so, cool. Yeah, right, and the, you know, there's school. some tar. There's snow covered, so you really can't get yeah. that great of sense. Twelve feet under. Right. Yes. <laughs> you can see the kindergarten. The one, the playground facing you will be the kindergarten, and then the the older children is on the other side. So it's in the back. You wouldn't be able oh, to see it. Okay. Yes, you wouldn't okay. see it. But it's a it's a fairly extensive playground. So you know, and and again, we we also envision so. that the the one and two kids, the kids in grades one and two, may play on the smaller one as well. It's appropriate for them. That's how they designed it. They designed it for lower grades. Oh. There's a nice safe surface, right? Yeah, right. And there's and the whole back is really yeah, tarred. Yeah. You know, it's all paved. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's not as great as grass. But right. when those right. fields come in, there's going to be lots of places for people to play. It's going to be awesome. Good. That's good to know. Thank you. You had just briefly touched on math. You, you said something about math and then kind of said, we'll come back to it. I don't know yeah. if this is a curriculum question, but I wasn't sure if you had, I know when we had our coffee, you weren't sure yet about, are we going to level? Are we not going to level? How's math? Do you know how math is I don't think we, I don't think we have decided that we're officially going to level. What Julie is going to talk about briefly when she comes up is uh, work that's being done on um, the, with the math department on um, maybe transitioning to a different math program that starts in sixth grade. Um, so it's going to really depend a, a lot on that, you know, whether or not, and it also is going to depend on I me. Mean, our, our commitment is if there are kids who really, really need a strong, you know, like a different kind of math, you know, focus, then we're not going to hold kids back. But we're not necessarily going to, to level them because what happens when you do that is it affects, it affects the, the uh, grouping in, in all of the other subjects. And our, our hope is that, as we said before, that we're going to have teachers who are going to be able to meet the range in the classroom. Um, if that's not the case, then we'll have to make a different adjustment. Um, but I think in the, in the middle school, that was sort of a decision we decided we were going to, we were going to group 
there because it was a, tran a real transition to, to the seventh grade. So we're not, we're just not sure yet, Amanda. You know, it's going to really depend on the kids and what makes sense, right? But the, the, but we are looking at maybe a new math curriculum, which would come before the school committee for for review. So it wouldn't necessarily be everyday math, but it would be a, a math curriculum. So. Does that, does that answer your question? Yeah. But if you have other questions or other parents have questions, if you just drop us an email or, or see us, call us, and we, we, we want to be able to answer the questions that people have because we can't just anticipate that everybody might, you know, have questions that we haven't heard. And there's still a lot of things that are unknown with, like, the new science and all the books that may come in, so we're still not sure on those yet. On, on what? Bar on science. the books and everything, science. on the new books or curriculum. For science? science. Well, science. Julie, this, right. you can answer that, Julie. The science books, that they'd be using the ones the sixth they'll, grade they'll currently use. what they have now, and we made that decision with the science vertical team because we wanted to see what got finalized in the new standards. We're working out of the draft ones, but we wanted to make sure before we allocated a lot of money towards anything new, we wanted to just make sure that those standards were stable um, and, and accepted by the state. So, but we're, believe me, I mean, the science teachers are looking. Yeah. They're certainly looking to see what's out there and what they, they're very interested in bringing in materials. And right. Yeah, so. The work being done on the side. Doesn't really work. make sense yeah. to, doesn't really make sense to do a new science curriculum if you standards are going to change because what if you change the curriculum and then it doesn't line up with the standards that get developed that seems like that's a, a little silly we've so, seen a little bit of a shifting happen with ela and math the way they they transitioned out of the old frameworks into the new ones and so um we were glad that we kind of waited you know especially with math to make sure that the standards were um, stabilized and accepted and adopted by the state before we really started to look and see you know how our curriculum uh, was aligned, but also what what more things would would we need based on these new standards? So we we'll take the same process and apply that to science. Okay. Science is a so it, just to go back to the leveling thing, I think the one thing that's always been a question for me in the leveling, to me, if you're going to level and kids are going to work at an accelerated pace, then you're not just staying with that grade level curriculum. If, you, if March comes and you're done with the fifth grade curriculum, you go into the sixth grade curriculum. That isn't how the leveling works you get to the same place at the end of the year with the leveling system. So to me, I have to see whether or not I think there's real value to that. I mean, what really is the difference? Okay. So that that's why I've always wondered about that. So I know part of why we did it was because that's what parents had really been pushing for. But it's but I've looked at it and watched it, and I'm thinking, well, I just want to make sure I'm confident that it's really get, getting the value that we really intended it to have. I don't know that it accelerates students' learning. Right, so so that to me, if you're going to level, you're leveling so you can accelerate the kids who are really capable of going at a fast, not only a faster pace, but at more sophisticated content. It's so deeper that's pace. deeper, yeah. So that's I think that's why we're still we can't say oh yeah we're definitely doing that because we're not quite positive. You know, we we do want to meet the needs of the of the top kids, however. So we're still figuring out with the teachers how that can be done. Okay, thanks. Thank you guys for letting us you're, talk. You're, oh, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks, thanks for, for coming. I know. Thanks Thank for coming you. out in this weather. Yes. I don't know what doing out there. Right. Thank you, Margaret. I'll drive home safely. Well, now, Julie, come on. Thanks. Julie has some kind of, I think, exciting kind of things to chat yeah, about. We talked about curriculum at 9.30. That's all right. Thank Looking you. forward to it. <laughs> and if you know, Julie, we can always, you know, we'll continue with the next time if you feel like it's going to be too Well, you know, I tried to keep it, um, tried to keep it short only uh, because we are, last year we, we started to do, we were doing an incredible amount of work, um, aligning to the standards, creating units, trying to identify what we needed. Um, and this year we're implementing, and you know, we, Carol and I always talk about there's a difference between alignment difference, and implementation. Yeah. And so right now um, we're doing all the work that we talked about last year. So it's kind of a different presentation tonight, which is um, a little bit more um, on the side of just showing you some of the things that, that we are currently working on based on our conversations from last year. So let's see if I can get this to come up. And yeah, go ahead. Keep on going. Yeah. Oh, good. All right. So last year we did, um, through the math and ELA vertical teams, we aligned all of our units 
and assignments, assessments, things like that to the standards. Um, we have been working on that for a couple of years, but last year we, we had really uh, worked to update all the trajectories, um, and that's what we're implementing now, our updated trajectories, including the units that we've revised to focus on reading and literature, informational text, the three modes of writing that are embedded within the ELA frameworks, and different components of research that are aligned to each grade level. Um, and so we're also, along with that, you know, I, I almost say parallel to that, we're working through the, the RTI program that we're developing in the district in developing supports for small group instruction along these standards so that our students are, are learning the standards but also getting on support on the standards that they need support with. So um, it's kind of two things happening at the same time and it, it's, it's really good work. It's, it's just a lot of it. You know, we're doing a lot of things. Um, at the same time. But I think for us, it's really this year for ELA, um, it's really about implementation and, and looking at how you take the standards and build the curriculum from that and what the units look like with this revision and what, this, what the writing calls for now as opposed to what we may have done three or four years ago. Um, and so that's been really exciting work. It's very fun. One of the things that Margaret and I heard at the coffee, Julie wasn't at the coffee, but we heard the coffee was from one parent. She said, I, I am so happy with what my fifth grader is doing in writing. And she said, I wish my seventh grader had the opportunity to have it because it's so different. And the writing that, you know, the focus, the, the, the ability for the, my student to, to write is just really noticeably better and different. She specifically said, I wish my seventh grader had had this, this new work that you're doing because she said, it's, I notice it, it's making a difference. So I was happy wow, to see that's that. Great. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that. That's great. I was very happy to hear. Right, Margaret? Really. That was a very good Absolutely. compliment. Absolutely. That's great. Um, well, I don't, know how, I don't know how to top that. <laughs> Maybe that's the greatest thing you can hear. Um, in mathematics, we've done the same thing. We have updated our trajectories. Uh, we worked through, you know, everyday math has a spiral, so we worked through the spiral to identify what the grade level critical areas are. So when the standards are, are aligned and adopted by the state, they'll tell you grade four, these are the four critical areas you need to focus on. So we used that and looked through that lens at the curriculum and said, okay, let's determine where these lessons and units are within the, within the units that we're teaching and, and make sure we're really content specific about those critical areas and make sure that we're targeting them um, effectively with kids. So we've done that work, we're implementing that this year. <coughs> we're also looking at That's assessments you. and how, how to use our assessments to identify needs that children may have. And so um, similar to what we were doing in ELA, we're looking at um, where do we need to develop small group instruction for our students in math based on these critical areas because we know they're not gonna change. We know that each grade level builds on the last, so how can we ensure that we're supporting all our students through that trajectory upwards? And so um, to do that kind of work, we're, we're using all the curriculum that we have, but we're also looking at perhaps updating our middle school curriculum because of the shifts that have happened at the middle school level specifically. With <coughs> and so, we'll, you know, when we get to the point where we would talk more about that, I'll certainly bring uh, members of the math vertical team here to talk about that um, for any questions people may have. But right now, what I've done through my curriculum directors group is, is ask, you know, 30 or 40 different communities or curriculum directors, people who have jobs like I do, what how did you uh, address the math changes at the middle school level? And, and so I've gotten a ton of feedback on different programs that they're using, so our vertical team will go out and look at the different programs. We've brought a couple programs in to start looking at them and kind of comparing them to the lessons that we have. And so we're piloting a few lessons out of those things that we have right now um, and just trying to get a general idea of what those changes look like in the classroom. In the, in the construction of lessons and things like that. So we'll certainly give you updates on that as we progress through the year. Um, and I know that the math people are dying to talk about it, but <laughs> we wanted to have more experience with some of the things that we've you know, been looking at and researching and before we really had a conversation about it. But uh, it's really good work and they're very excited about it. Um, we've also implemented iPads and iPads at, at the middle school level for students who need um, additional support 
at the middle school level. So we, uh, we had uh, some teachers request some iPads so that they could just work one-on-one -on -one with students, and we find that that's, that's very successful. Um, they've had some great experiences, and, and they'll come and talk about that as well as a, as a mode of remediation. And I know that with the new Pembroke, we'll have a lot of technology, so we're thinking about how that could work as we you know, look at some of the technology needs that we'll have when the new school opens. So kind of doing it in different places, but it will come together pretty nicely, I think. Um, for Just for ELA, here are some of the uh, new units that we've updated. I mean, obviously there are more, but I wanted to just give you a sense of, of what the students are working on um, when it comes to reading and writing built within um, the same unit. Our units are crafted using the Understanding by Design model. We were trained by uh, Jay McTie. We even brought our curriculum director, uh, well, Carol and I brought all of our curriculum department heads uh, to a training and our literacy coaches to see Jay McTie and uh, he spoke a lot about the design that he used to create the units that we're using, um, that he's talking about all over the world. Yeah. He's, he's gone to he's China, he's gone to countries thing. and um, all across the United States design? talking about the units that we're actually, we are implementing in, in the classroom now. So um, it's getting a lot of traction, which is great, and uh, that's exciting. Um, and does that understanding by design model um, kind of include specific texts? I mean, everything, yes. Uh, recommend specific recommend books specific and Recommend specific books, and, um, yeah. certainly. Um, writing, yeah, read writing all over standards. The world. <laughs> Could yes. be. Could be, but it's really it's really a design. I'm just trying to get a, <laughs> It's really a way to design curriculum so that you're focusing on standards Authors and, really and what your what our children well. need at each at each grade level. What this really looks like, what it really calls for. So it's it's being more specific than vague, which is you know a good thing when it comes to curriculum. Okay. Um, so our units include literature, nonfiction, um, trajectories of lessons, teaching strategies ways to work with children who may not be um, meeting the standard as you're currently teaching it. How do you differentiate for that? Um, and curriculum embedded assessments and performance tasks and, and just different projects that children can work on to show that they've met the, the standard or the scale of what the skill is asking for. Um, our students are reading and writing and analyzing and discussing a lot um, of literary analysis work. So they're looking at literature and analyzing that and they're able to write about it as well and talk about it. So it's kind of building in a lot of different standards that maybe didn't exist uh, previously. So uh, we're hearing a lot of great feedback from our children in terms of you know what this looks like. Um, and we'll, we'll definitely share some more information with you. We'll bring the literacy coaches and they can talk about, here's what we're seeing in the classroom, here are, how the, here are our children, how they're responding to it. I got to see the art and poetry unit at the ninth grade and just listening to the kids talk about art and, and look at art from all over the world and you know wow. being able to project that and talk about it in relation to literature and poetry, it was amazing. Um, we have the financial literacy unit that we're starting in grade five that incorporates nonfiction and fiction. So our students are learning about money, which is kind of a weird title because you think, oh, financial literacy. Like, well, I'm thinking those are the high school know, courses, right? That is the high school course, but it's yeah. a nice tie into high school. Yes. But this unit incorporates nonfiction and fiction, and so our children are reading about money. How does money work? What, what do people do with money? Um, because it is an interesting concept if you're a child and you don't really know how that all really works. Um, so that's kind of the age where people start to think about money. You know, fifth graders are, they want things. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> so, they look to their parents yeah, to pay for right, what so they want. Yeah, so it's a little bit of learning on that end, but also um, looking at, at stories and literature and, you know, chapter books and how characters deal with different wow. situations around money. The like, meaning of money in terms and of how relationships. Does it work. And, yes. Right. So it's a nice tie-in. A, tie a in. lot really of symbolism. There's a lot going it's on. It's really there. fun. It's yeah. really, really interesting stuff. It's fun. So um, so that's just a short, you know, short example for you of some of the things that we're working on um, that you're your kids are working on. <laughs> High school nostalgia. So we're working on, um, we're incorporating two new units this year. One is nostalgia in grade 11 and work in grade 12. And so um, I'm sure we can get feedback from you. They haven't uh, taught those two units yet, so those are upcoming. Does that mean any of the summer books are going to change? or that, No. No. Okay. No. 
And, and these are not the only units. These, no, no, you, these are the only ones. These are model units that the state, you know, has has spent you know years now developing. Years, yeah. But it's actually teachers from across the state that have put together these integrated units, and they're you know you some of them are sixty five pages long. Right, so our teachers. It, this has been this, this has no, been a no big, simple. This task. is not a small task no, for our teachers. not by any stretch. So I think Julie's just listing for you. That we didn't adopt all of the ones that the state had no. developed. We no. picked the ones that tied into where where they where our curriculum might have had some gaps that we thought. Well, these would be units that would be great to to fill that gap. So yeah. So the, these are these are model units, not all that the students focus on at those grades. Right. Now this is just a really yeah. quick example for you just to get us into some of the titles and you know kind of what lies underneath that because it doesn't always uh, jive when you look at when I looked at financial literacy I thought oh geez I'm not mm -hmm. so sure and then honestly it ended up being one of my favorites mm -hmm. so it's just you know how it works sometimes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, also this year, one of our we do not have science standards adopted yet by the state, but we do have K to 12 um, STEM initiatives that we're working on um, because they're important to us. And so one of the one of the programs that we're implementing this year along these lines um, is an elementary summer camp called Camp Invention, yes. which is very exciting. Yes. Um, lots of fun planning that. A lot of fun for, yeah, for our children. Yeah. Very hands-on, um, very oriented towards um, being an active participant in learning about how things work and how to be a creative problem solver. Um, and that really does tie into the grant that we got at the high school level. So it's a nice, it's an earlier uh, version of what kids will be working on as they get older. And this is for students going into grades one through six. One right? through six, right? It will Do you be, remember the date? It's it will be held at um, Pearly School since it's our July. only school open this summer. <laughs> It's probably going to be packed this it summer. It will be a very busy summer. I do have some dates that I can I can June 29th. June 29th, June 29th through July through July, July 3rd, 2nd. I always I, yeah. It's a four day camp. Usually it's a five day camp, but we um, decided to shorten that because we know families go away um, over the 4th of July holiday, so we decided Snow to, needs to make, go away. Yeah, mm -hmm. we decided to make it a four day camp. Uh, but it's very exciting. It'll be a lot of fun. And a lot of information will be coming home about that if it hasn't um, started to trickle out of the school. And, and part of the so. decision about those dates was not to interfere with the summer programs right. that we've been running, but at the same time it was to help parents with that gap. Yeah, right. That's good. So that's kind of how we decided on those dates. Yeah. Uh, we're also looking at the elementary school uh, next year um, to incorporate some school day STEM programs for children, so we're thinking about um, Mad Science, which is a fun science program for PTA children. PTA funded some Mad. Do you Ooh. remember that after school? PTA funded. I think Lori Kostuczyk was very involved oh. in that. Remember how there were some after school, the kids really loved them? I think that was Mad yeah. Science. Yeah, So we're talking about bringing that into the, and PTA, you know, is has been talking about how they want to spend their money. This is the kind of stuff oh, yeah. that this we, we might Good. want some help from PTA on. We can't get grants for it. Uh, we're also looking at Science with Scientists. It's a program run out of Northeastern University, um, and I have some connections there with, with their science people, so we're, we're talking with them about potentially bringing in some speakers for children uh, to learn about science from scientists. We're looking at um, creating a maker space, which we know Carol's very excited about, um, and that's a place where children can make things, and, and so you we would bring in a lot of different you know, just tons of different Legos and pieces and just a lot of different components to make interesting um, inventions. And so we're looking at designating a space for that. You could say, number. make something that you can wear that lights up. Well, you give it a child a challenge. challenge. Or give it, give kids so a challenge. So give them a whole bunch whatever. of stuff. Yeah. 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 The creative. It's great. Right. Uh, we're also looking at PBS Online STEM, which is a free program um, that we could implement through PBS. They have done a ton of work, PBS on STEM initiatives, so it's, it's worth us looking into what they have to offer at the elementary level. Uh, we're looking at LEGO as well to tie in with LEGO Robotics, which we're building in at the middle high school. Um, and the environmental field study you talked about a little bit earlier yeah. um, when you were working Going with Going to Nature's Fest. Yeah. Right. So at the middle high school, uh, we did build in the science, technology, and engineering course. Uh, we have created the after-school STEM club, 
um, that worked on Future City but will now be working on robotics. And so we're excited about getting that up and running. Um, and our focus next year will really be on creativity and innovation and a lot of different ways that that can happen, not necessarily just in the grant that we got, but across curriculum. Um, we're looking at bringing in some innovation mentors and speakers to give children some real world applications of what this what is creativity you know, <coughs> in, in this kind of job versus that kind of job and what does innovation look like, how does that happen. It's kind of a mystery concept for a lot of people. Um, what does that really look like in the world? So we'll be working on that and hopefully building some corporate internships and I'm hoping we can do that through the grant that we got um, through the state of Massachusetts. So uh, we recently received a creativity and innovation grant. We were so excited that we got it because it's a competitive grant. Very competitive. Congratulations. And, uh, thank you. Very we're exciting. so excited. Um, yeah. it, that does not happen very often. And to get this grant is really exciting because because we're not we're not poor or high need. Right. So we don't qualify for most competitive for grants. grants. Right. And so sometimes you have to partner with other districts, and that you know it becomes this big thing. But um, but it was competitive and we got it and we're Great. so we're thankful. And I had to call, after I <laughs> read the, the nine C cuts, I called the state the next morning. I said, yeah. just please don't tell me you cut the creativity yeah. grant. And I no. told you they would never cut that because this is no, their just new the focus. kindergarten grant. They cut the kindergarten this grant, which is focus. not funny, creativity but you know, it, was, it, it was just really interesting to see where they were headed. You know, that yeah. kind of That's the hard, that's why you can't always depend on grants because they, it really does depend yeah. on who's making the decisions about what gets funded, and that changes. So I've seen this all my career. You know, you think they're going in one direction, you invest all this time and energy, and then the grant goes away. And then if you've and got- And it's so hard when a grant goes away. Exactly. I mean, my title one grant gets cut every year, yeah. a little more, a little more, a little more, and you, and you just can just do less it's and hard. less and It's less hard to depend on grants. Tough. So tough. this is great. So this is a really exciting grant. We're working, um, we're working on redesigning the creativity course, um, and, and in order to do that, um, what we're going to do is work with Suffolk University to facilitate a partnership with George Mocha, who's um, oh, agreed to work with us. And we had a partner Excellent. with Suffolk, Suffolk We were excited store. With, about that. They put oh. that school store together for us. Oh. Yeah, we're really excited to get working yes. on that. So we're we'll um, working with the Creative Education Foundation um, to train our teachers. Um, on create on the creative problem solving process, they two of our teachers have been to the the state conference on creative problem solving, um, but this is really designed for teachers and how to reinvent your curriculum using this kind of innovative thinking. So we're really excited about that. Um, so we're also developing opportunities for um, field trips for our students to go out and look at the process of how this all works in the working world. Um, and so we'll be updating our courses and units where we've gotten some funding for new technologies and apps that we're going to be designing and putting into this program and the new creativity showcase for next year, which was a huge hit this year. It was. It was very successful. And it was so impressive what the kids were able to do and to see so many parents was so awesome. It was. It was so great. Yeah. And I remember Lisa Ryer, one of the teachers, saying, I just don't know if people will come. And it was unbelievable. There were just so many people there. So we're, we're looking at how we can bring in some speakers to that as well and to kind of build that, that program up a little bit more. So, so that'll be exciting. So there's a lot, a lot going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lot going on. And, and I'll bring people back to kind of give you more updates as, as we move through that. And this is our, our camp invention um, for the year. This is my last slide. This is our camp invention um, theme for the year is Illuminate. And um, I will put this on my website so you can click on some of the links and, and see some of the videos that are associated with camp invention. Um, we want our children to be more creative and innovative and have a place to do that. And so for us to offer this for them is, is really exciting for all of us. And we hope people take a part of it. Yeah, that. it is a cost. There is a cost for it. So, you know, we, we're hoping. Oh, there's that. definitely a cost for that. You know, it's funny. I, we were so excited about it happening. Um, Margaret and I want to send like all the children that we have in our families to it. <laughs> yes, that's right. So, uh, but it is. It is kind of. It, it is definitely something you want to look at online and kind of pace out what you're doing with your summer plans, especially. Um, you know, cost. Being cost effective is, is our goal. We try to do that as best we can. So when will you will you have a price on that? 
Everything is up online right now. Um, so right now, if people if people by I March, I saw in there it said yeah for discounted rate for March twenty by March twentieth it's um, two twenty for for that week of camp and and I think the highest it would go is two forty five, but there is like a discount if you register by the twentieth. I just went through and registered my daughter for her camp, same camp, different place. Oh, funny. Yeah, uh, same concept, everything. So um, and it was it was two twenty. So it, it is really, truly well, that cost. You'll get some really good feedback on it, won't you? Oh, well, I'll have all kinds of feedback on it. Well, I was so excited about it. I talked to her principal, and she said, oh, well, we're going to do that, too. So <laughs> now they get to do it, so it's great. Uh, but it is a great experience. So just check it out. We'll put it on Margaret's website, and we'll put it on mine. It is up there right now. But Maybe you can put that on Facebook. Facebook. I will that it's going on Facebook. Yeah, yes. we had worked on a Facebook Zoom. message, and, and that's ready to go out as well. So please call us, though, if, if people have questions or specifics they would like to know certainly welcome to call us anytime okay. Great. thank you Julie. thank you thank you so much thank you all right okay oh it's late it's a little late <laughs> That's so we don't have much more okay uh, well, I don't have any transfers. Was there transfers? No, I saw in your notes it was transferred, oh, but okay. I don't have any transfers. Okay. Well, you thought the, I was going to have you're transfers. You're the one that would have transfers. Right. If you have none, then there are yep. none. I have. Um, Thank you, Joel. Thank you. I have three invoices. Yep. Um, two invoices okay. for the turf field project and one for the early roof project. Um, I have the warrant cover sheets. Shouldn't be sitting. You gotta stand no, up. No, I shouldn't be sitting. I should be sitting. You gotta stand up. So there's the invoices. Um, I noticed in the orange notes the we all amount. Do to sign or just Barbie? Well, you have to make a motion and then. Um, yeah, I need three signatures. But um, the amount of the Georgetown Light Department bill is different. So um, all the six oh six. It's six oh six. That was um, we had an outstanding balance. <laughs> so we they added did. it to it <laughs> for oh, the first. Dear. For the first oh, bite bill, <laughs> I don't know if I should say that on TV. But <laughs> probably nobody's watching it at ten o'clock. <laughs> um, can I do these together? <coughs> you, can do, you can do each warrant together. You're know, like you can do each warrant separately. I should say that. So you can just approve the warrant for the it's two late. bills. <laughs> I know I can't talk anymore. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the chair will entertain a motion to approve payment of 60605 to the Georgetown Municipal Light Department as presented. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and then the uh, turf field. Uh, so what is that for? That's the last payment on the turf. Oh, okay. And that's Did different. figure that into the that's budget? Different. Yeah, okay. yeah, don't okay. worry, it's I in know, the I'm budget. <laughs> <laughs> I'm channeling John Pinger right now. Don't That's worry. not an expense. I thought we were done with everything. No, okay. Because so I had the quirk outstanding contract yeah. in that little spreadsheet I made. Perfect. All right. Okay. The chair will entertain a motion to approve um, payment of quirk construction invoice number 531-08 dated January 30th, 2015 in the amount of $4,950 as presented. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the chair will entertain a motion to approve um, payment of CBI consulting invoice number 22812 dated January 27th, 2015 in the amount of $2,281 as presented. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, go oh, ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. These are just some side letters of agreement that are coming up next, I think. Right. Um, oh, the anime club advisor yeah, anime stipend. Club. Yep, yes. Okay. So the chairman will entertain a motion to approve the side letter of agreement. For the anime club advisor stipend to the amount of one thousand four hundred and twelve dollars for the twenty fourteen twenty fifteen school year. So moved. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um. 
Okay, and then we have the homeschool families, new list. I didn't even look at this. Oh, oh so I, I asked Laura about this because I was a little surprised to see this. And Laura said that Donna updates, Donna updates the list periodically, and this is just the most recent updated list. Um, so it doesn't necessarily represent. mean we have added. No, it's this is just, just the updated list. Just a okay. Okay. Um, the chairman will entertain a motion to approve the list of homeschool families as of January 29, 2015, as presented by Dr. Donna Spray. So moved. Why does it say 2007, 2008? Where? Here. Oh, at the top. Um, oh, I, I don't know why it would say that's that. That's just the headings. Oh, yeah, the headings are wrong on one side. We that's a, that. that's a blast from the past, though. We should definitely adjust that. We won't. I don't think should hold up the vote on it, but we should definitely make an adjustment. I don't know how that slipped in there. I just. Oh, but the. Um, oh, well, it, I understand why. <laughs> a few years have passed since that. Since that. I looked at those kids, like how old are those oh, kids? Wait, what? Do you have a question about that, Barbie? No, I'm just doing the same thing. Looking, I'm like, oh, are they? I thought they were. This was wrong, but this information was all right, but it's not. Right. What's not right? I'm sorry. No, so I thought just the heading was wrong. Yeah. But it's, it is it is all the um, ages and stuff oh, of the children. Oh, okay. okay. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to hold up the vote for that. Okay. Thank you for changing that, Laura. Yeah, we'll make the change on it. Do you want to second that? Second. Okay. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, and then we have the light donation. Yes. You know how Teddy Kostusik yeah. was working on that project? And it mm -hmm. was awesome at the play because it I really heard. was. It really made a difference. Yeah. <clears throat> Which, by but the way, anyway, the play was fantastic. It wasn't the play. Oh, my amazing. gosh. I mean, people. normally Vanessa would have. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, we, we'll let Vanessa talk about we'll it the next time. But it. she had a big okay. heart. She did. She oh, did. She, she, she had a singing. She really, she did awesome. Fantastic. She really was good. So, you the know, one, cool. so they, you know, they had different, thank you, Joan. They had different right. sources of funds that he had gotten, as you know. He would get 10,000 from the GEF and you know, Such some money job. from a grant. But when the Municipal Light Department heard about the, you know, raising funds, they said, well, we'd like to help. We'd like to do something. How much do you, you know, how much could this help you? And so basically they donated $4,000 and $4,080. And that just allowed Teddy to complete the, the major part of what he wanted to do. So I just want to make sure that we acknowledge Dave and the Georgetown Municipal Light Department for that generous donation. Yeah, that, that was really very nice of them. Fantastic. Yeah, and it was Thank so you. I was so happy to support Teddy because it really Teddy just yeah. believed yeah, so he's much. A he's a senior this year. I know. So you know, for him to be able to leave, feeling like, wow, I made a difference in my. You know what's community. interesting with that whole thing is um, I sent his mother an email after I read the letter, read read the paper about the article with Teddy, and I just said, I just wanted to tell you what a great job he did yeah. and how great he was when he came to the school committee and, and told us all about it and when she emailed me back I couldn't believe everything that went into it I, know. I mean I it's thought it was a lot of work when she listed out how he went to all the vendors and priced them out and I mean it was like 10 different things that this student did beyond his own Right. school work and everything I, I said wow I don't think people realized how much time he put into no. it it was a lot and he was, it was just, he was so passionate about it. I know. It. And he I got know. up actually at the play initially mm -hmm. and he and he basically talked about how the, he thanked the light department and he talked about a little bit about the project and how the lights were new and what they got out of the funding. He thanked the GEF. And they said, you know, if people want to continue to donate, there are other things we, you know, we want to do. But, you know, he just got right up there and, you know, yeah, I mean, he's, he's just amazing. got an amazing yes. amount of poise and yeah, maturity. He yeah, and, he does. Um, and he so, That's so nice. believes in, you know, this, the, the, you know, the, the area of technology and arts and just amazing. Yeah, he's That's a great, great. <coughs> Well, um, okay, so, so we just want to obtain a motion to accept the donation of $4,080 from the Georgetown Municipal Light Department. Um, thank you for your generosity. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Hi. Hi. And I just I did forget this uh, this side letter for the um, motion to 
approve the side letter for the anti-bullying club advisor stipend in the amount of $1,412 for the 2014-2015 school year. So moved. Second. <coughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And that was a club that came from the suggestion of the kids. Of a child. Of the a kids student. set that up. Pretty cool, so. Okay. Uh, subcommittee reports? Oh. Really? I know. <laughs> I know. I don't... Is there anything really pressing? Negotiating met last night. Yeah. Uh, we're meeting again March, I think, 12th. Yeah, 11th or 12th. So it's in well, that. March 18th. I think oh, wait a minute. Let me, I think I got that written down. March 18th. It yeah. is March things are going. Things are going well, so we're, we're meeting. Um, I got your update. Budget and finance, we went all over that. Yeah, we so. went through all of that. We met on February 3rd, so. And then we had a governance meeting on the 22nd, so we're still working on the concussion policy. Mm -hmm domestic violence and discipline so yeah. we've got some legal reviews associated with that and we have to do another review of concussion and actually okay. we got information on both of those so we're definitely oh, like okay. the the, the uh, our attorney gave us uh, uh, revisions on the domestic violence and I contacted Mike Gilbert and asked him for the most updated uh, policies MASC might have regarding the new discipline law, and he sent me copies of all those. So those are in that packet, Lorene, that, that you have the governance packet okay. yep. that we can look at next time we meet. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, I read your update about the school building. The school Who's building. Um, yeah, sure. The, the high school is um, coming along. We've identified 10 possible general contractors, and um, the bids are due on March 12th, and the award will be in April. How um, long is the um, gym going to take? I know it starts a April vacation. Right. When is, is when is it going to be done? That's I thought question. it was going to be done by the by the summer, but you know, by the question. end but of by, the summer. No, no. I thought it was going to be done by the beginning of the summer because there's a lot of other summer work that's going to happen. But you know, okay. I think if we looked at the schedule, I think the reason for starting it in April is because they want to get a head start on that, okay. and they're basically resurf refinishing the floor implementing uh, putting in new bleachers that are of different structure creating a new storage closet you know moving that storage closet and then repainting the floor re restriping i guess they call yeah. it restriping the floor and somebody's going to repair that um, piece of wood along the wall that holds up the flags well Pete, no actually <laughs> chris point. is getting new banners he's getting chris is banners. figuring out oh, the new really? banner thing he's okay. gonna, he's going to the walls being painted uh, that I'm not sure, but I can't imagine they wouldn't. Be. I was going to say all those I mean, banners are coming down. But what Chris wants to do is like he might put like girls field hockey, and then you know the, instead of having you know they, let's say they won the you know Cape Ann League five times. Well, it'll list the five years on one banner as opposed to perfect, every individual. Perfect. It will look okay. I think so much oh, okay. more that, organized that, that way. That sounds nice. nice. But I can okay. find out at the next. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure it no. is being painted. I can't imagine they would take it down. Right, but like when the gym is projected to be yeah, finished. Yeah, that would be great. Um, Thank you. Okay. And then Pembroke is going to be substantially completed by the end of May. We've talked a lot about that today. Um, in one month, the FF&E, Furniture, Fixtures, and Equipment uh, Procurement, will begin. Wes, uh, our Director of Technology, Wes Vaughn, mm -hmm. came in and, and spoke about the, the plans. Um, you know, the goal is to have a coordinated and consistent technology plan in place for pre-K through 12. Mm -hmm. um, and the technology committee is working very hard at that, and that will be finished in June. Um, the technology committee meetings are open, you know, open meetings. I went to the last one. It was very interesting. Um, Liz Marchetti had done a, a survey of teachers at, at the, all the schools to find out, you know, what areas of technology they're comfortable with, they know about, they want to... Um, they want to see more of. It was it was a very helpful survey. Um, so it's <coughs> really is it, we're on we're on schedule on budget both in good shape. The quilts have been dry cleaned and fire treated. The repairs have been made to the third floor of linoleum. Um, we put pictures on Facebook, new pictures of the interior, and a couple of them were of the gym mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. and. Oh my gosh, my, I'm not my boys Facebook. were so excited to see that gym. They were like, Mom, when can we really? go in there? We want to go in there. It's yeah, like, it's, it's beautiful. It's a wood floor. And um, in, on, the, on the, you know, the edges of the gym, there's, you know, there's always a, 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 an apron yeah. around it. 
And so in wood, inlaid wood, says Pembroke on one side and then Georgetown on the other side. Oh, that's neat. Oh, like a football that's field. That's, that's, it's like just stunning. That's nice. It's just, it's, it's yeah, stunning. It's going to be lovely. People will see that. No, it is. Um, not such good news. <laughs> the, uh, we, we lost a week due to the snow cleanup, but that's kind of immaterial uh, because we've been ahead of schedule. Yeah. Um, the terrazzo floor has arrived. We have some color issues. We will be resolving those. Mm -hmm. um, a sunshade end piece at the end may need to be redesigned a little bit. We're going to look at an alternate. It was not letting so the it's like an awning you're snow. saying? It's kind of like an awning, but it wasn't letting the snow through. But it, we don't know if it's just because there's an exorbitant amount of snow this year. Right. Um, but they're looking at the design the, because it should it should go through. The committee was not comfortable with that. So, yeah, yeah, we'll be yeah, the addressing that. The committee the is definitely paying very close attention to those kind everything. Of things. Yeah. Yes. Good. Yeah. It's good. And yeah, the next good. meeting will be on February 24th and then March 10th. Okay. So, so the March Thank meeting you. might end up starting with a tour. Yeah, that would so be great. So we can, we can, can maybe, we can you can maybe that. bring that up to oh, coordinate fine. with the, with yeah. the uh, you know, with the um, <clears throat> committee. Absolutely. So the, the school committee can be invited to. Yeah, and absolutely. then last time the and actually the board of selectmen would probably want to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be nice. And actually, yeah. you'd really be in good shape then. You'd see most everything's going to be completed. We're yeah. talking about substantial completion in May, so that's right. you know there, there's probably right. a, a lot that will be done in March, finished in March. Yeah. And I did want to say too that tonight the um, the kids left for France. I know Ooh, they yeah. did. Yeah, I yeah know. they left tonight. Everything so. Is well, they were planning on leaving at like eight, I think. Well. So I'm sure. I, uh, yeah. So I can't wait to hear how, how that went. goes, and I'm sure they'll, I'm sure they'll going? have a great time. I think that I, I asked Peter about it. There were originally 26 people. I think 24 are going. One, uh, the two people uh, who aren't are, were a, a child and their parent. The parent must have been going as well, and they determined that it wasn't really something they wanted to do, but they got the credit. So they, oh. they worked, you know, we worked out that credit oh, good. <coughs> situation. So they'll have an opportunity to go at another time. And, you know, they got some cash refund part of it. They were refunding in cash. So oh, that's Peter good. told me Everything that 24 out. out of 26 that's was signed up to go. I talked to um, Miss Arrigo yesterday, and she yeah. was all excited to I go. Know. Oh, good. So yeah. I'm well, things have them. I mean, it's always unstable a little bit. They're not... We're not worrying about things in the same way at the peak like we were, you know, that w when we were talking about this, it was very emotional because it was sure. really yeah, scary it was in on that the news era, every time every you turn, day, every time right, you, turn you haven't around. really heard much. So I'm sure okay. they'll have a great time. I'm sure they'll have a great time. And I think, you know, the, the um, kids' safety and the, the staff safety was Prime paramount, mm -hmm. paramount for us. So, um, yeah, and, and, that, and out. you know, it making the great. change and slight change in the itinerary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure they'll come back with some mm -hmm. great stories. So I wish yeah, them well. Very great. Um, I think that's it. Okay. So okay. the uh, there is no uh, need for an executive no. session this evening. So the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn at 10:16 p.m. So moved. Second. All in any discussion. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. <laughs> great. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Stay safe. Drive carefully. <laughs>